Some you nonsense. bearded weirdo. I feel like a bum. This is Talk Sport. We are the two mics. We are back, and it's time to say a very good morning to Mr. Mike, a porky, a parry. Very good morning to Mr. Parry. A very good morning to you, Mike. And uh, yes, a scintillating weekend in many ways. And yeah, you're right, sure crises breaking out all over the mm. shop. Why did I tell the audience earlier on today that mm. we would be doing Heroes and Villains tonight? I've no idea why you did that, because yeah. Heroes and Villains normally yeah. is something we do on our show on a Sunday. And we're doing the show this Sunday, aren't we? We are indeed, one to four, yeah. Sunday and so, we, so we're going to race back from Whitley Bay, where we've got a show yes. on Saturday night. It's all very, very busy at the weekend. I'm not going to be able to get to Bournemouth because Everton are playing at Bournemouth and oh, we're yes. on the best run that I've ever seen them on. So, Bournemouth or Everton? Uh, Everton. Yes. So it would have been nice well, to have gone second, there. Well, second, aren't they? Hard to believe. Second, second. Well, it's not hard to believe. And by the way, not only are they second, mm. we've got, uh, I think it's a three-point cushion. Yeah. Um, because Manchester United failed yesterday at uh, Watford, Watford, wasn't it? Watford, yes. that's right. Yeah. yeah, they were terrible, weren't they? Yeah, I watched that game and uh, I have to say there was not a lot there, was there? And you see... Um, Some people are now saying actually they were better under Lou Van Hal. I mean, what's going on? I mean, I wonder, yeah. and I've said this to you before, about mm. Jason Mourinho. Mm. Is it possible that Jason Mourinho has kind of passed his peak well, and gone down the other side? Well, um, I think there's something in that. I was just thinking to... Um, it's a two-point cushion, by the way. Two Tottenham points, third two points. with 11 that's points. Right, that's right, yeah, I forgot about Tottenham, sorry, yeah. Uh, How can you forget about Tottenham? Well, you shouldn't, should you, because they're a very significant team. Mm. Um, no, I heard um, the chap reviewing the papers in on uh, Andy and Jason's oh, yeah. show. On the sports bar, yeah, yes. Saying exactly that. You know, has Mourinho lost his magic? Yeah. Um, you know, the, the magic dust he used to sprinkle across the whole of the world of football yeah. and used to sort of emanate from his fingertips. Yeah. Has that gone? And, and with the first signs of that, that it had gone... Evidence at Chelsea, well, and, and shouldn't we have taken more notice of his performance at Chelsea before mm. giving him the world's biggest football club? Well, to you run? do wonder, yeah, because it was only yeah. what the other week that we heard that they're the first football club in this country, anyway. Yes. I think maybe was it in the world who have had a, a, a turnover of over half a billion pounds? Yes, that's which, right. You know, uh, no, no, not a tur- uh, turn. Yes, turnover, five hundred and fifty-five billion. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I mean, look, who knows? The the point is that do we believe that uh, Pep Guardiola inherited a much better squad than uh, Jose did at Manchester United? Well, that's possible, but I mean, even if it is a better squad, I mean, they have changed overwhelmingly differently, haven't they? I mean, they've become a Pep Guardiola team overnight. Yeah, isn't the biggest worry Pogba? I mean, he's the world's yeah. most expensive footballer, yeah. and so far... Well, he hit the bar, didn't he? Well, uh, uh, I saw Everton on Saturday, right? Yeah. And uh, the boy Gay, um, not quite sure the what to call Gay. him, actually. Yeah, G- G- our midfield player that we bought from... I don't from. know who he is. Yeah, you do. Guy. Guy? Yeah, we bought him from Aston Villa for £7.2 million. Oh, yeah. But well, on I'm his sorry, sh- I don't keep up with all the Everton But signings. on his shirt, yeah. he, he wears the name Kana, C-A-N-A. Right. And then, but on the programme, he's named Gay. Right. So, um, which well, and it's a bit confusing. because we had a, over. Yes, that's right. We had another Gay two seasons ago. Mm. Um, but it's not the same guy, you yeah. see what I mean? But uh, anyway, we've got well, him from... a different guy. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, sorry. A different person. Person, I should say. Well, he's a different guy and a different gay as well. You know what I mean? That's the, yeah, that's the, that's the point. But, but, but anyway, listen. Right. Uh, he cost did some... he score? Um, did he score on Saturday? No. Uh, Lukaku. Did you see somebody put out a picture? Lukaku didn't score either. He did, he did. He, he scored the third. It. He scored he the did third. Not touch well, it. Um, he's credited with well, it. Well, of course he is. And by the way. He did not touch that. By the way, yeah. I'm so glad he, he was credited with yeah. it because I'd have lost £50. Would you? I had a dispute with the betting people right. after the game uh-huh. and, I, and I said, no, he's oh, credited with it. Because you had Lukaku to score. Yeah, yeah, I did, yeah. yeah. I always have him first or last scorer. Right. So, and he was last scorer. Right. So, uh, so, so, that's so you want more money? I won. Well, I didn't actually, because I put on a lot more than that. Oh, I got very, very excited before the game, oh. thinking we were going to, you know, score right. five. And then and all I went one. Stuff. I mean, I have to say, I did have a little chuckle to myself yeah. when I saw that Middlesbrough had gone one nil up. Yeah, but uh, you see, I'm, I'm all for that sort of physical contact yeah. between footballers and players. Now, if you look at it carefully, then clearly, um, uh, Sacklenberg yeah. was impeded yeah. by a well, head. The head came but, to his arm, didn't yes, it? Yes, that's right. Yeah. But, but as far as I'm concerned, that's the rough and tumble of football. Well, it depends if he has a grip of the ball, doesn't it? I, I didn't argue with that. All the people around me, oh, disgraceful and all yeah. that kind of stuff. And I said, no, no, it's physical contact. Yeah. L- leave it alone. Yeah. It's fine. And we will we will get these goals back. And we yeah. did get the goals back. Yeah. So that wasn't and a... Did you, did, did you sort of, um, um, sort of when you were w- walking around yeah. the, the stadium and talking to people, get the sense that Koeman is a very different kettle of fish from, oh, uh, oh, much from more. the last incumbent, Mr Martinez? Much more. I think I said to you about two weeks ago, I read a paragraph from one of the Everton players that it started to go wrong at the end of last season yeah. when players started turning for training a bit later mm. and weren't getting fined. Yeah. They, they, their dress code slipped. 
the use of mobile phones in inappropriate situations yeah. was starting to encroach on right. the concentration factor in the squad. Right. It was all. It was all. It, so it was all about discipline. It was all about discipline. Yeah. It was all going. And 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 Cohen is a very different kettle of fish. But were you also surprised? And I have to tell people we're not going to concentrate on Everton for yeah. the whole show because otherwise we get bored. Yeah, exactly. But were you also surprised? Remember you said start the game with the last eleven you had on the pitch. Yes. And they started with Barkley. Didn't uh, they? Absolutely marvellous. We were sitting in the uh, restaurant, right? Yeah. Uh, and the lady came round with the team. What sheets. did you have for lunch? Uh, lamb, roast lamb, lamb yeah. Nice. Uh, p- uh, pea soup to start off with, and, and then roast lamb. Minted pea soup? Yeah, minted pea soup, yeah. I you didn't like minted peas. No, I do. I, I don't mind them in soup. I don't mind them in soup. No, don't well, like... We were in Edinburgh, right? Yeah. And you, yeah, the, the fish and chips available yes. in this particular place we yes. were in, and they had minted peas. Yes, they did. And you refused them. Yeah, but I don't like minted peas. Well, you just had minted pea soup. Yeah, but that's uh, that's fluid. That's How is it liquid. Different? Well, it's different because minted peas on a plate full of fish and chips yeah. is extremely dry and really? crushed. Uh-huh. And, and it's like eating green. Uh, sort of salt, you know what I mean? It's, no, it is. It is. It's right. uh, it's not okay. at all. Um, was there ham in it as well? No, there wasn't ham in it. No, no, no. I like definitely to do not. A ham and pea soup. What? Pea and ham soup. Pea and ham soup. Yeah, I quite yeah. like that. But anyway, what was that noise? What? What was yeah, that noise? Yeah, well, it's sort of like a pirate day yesterday. That's right. So uh, anyway, what happened was yeah. the lady brought around the team sheets. Yeah. I was the first to spot it. My eagle eye went to uh, you know Barkley, and I thought he'd be on the subs bench. He wasn't. Yeah. He was in the team, uh-huh. and it's a brilliant decision by Kuman because he had a fine game. Yeah, and uh, it looked good. The one thing you've got to say, and I suppose it's the, unspe- it's the unspoken amongst Everton fans, is. Mm. Apart from Spurs, yeah. all the teams we played are in the bottom half of the Premier League, and True. two of them are in the bottom three. Yeah. So, so, and and if you look at who Liverpool have played, yeah. and Liverpool, I think, are two points behind they us. They look pretty good against Chelsea. They yeah. look very good against Chelsea. That, so far, they've played Arsenal, they've played Chelsea, and they've played well, Man United, haven't they? they played Leicester as well. Uh, played Leicester, sorry, yeah, yeah. The, the Premier League champions. Yeah. And, and they've got a good haul of points mm. from the... Clubs in the top six of yeah. the uh, Premier League. Right. We've got our hall of points from clubs nearer the bottom six, yes. but uh, apart from Spurs. Yeah. But I think that you'll find that that's a great way to start accumulating points at the start of the season, mm. and your confidence factor builds up because yeah. you think you're, you're, you're well, a good team. Well, I've always said there's no point. I mean, yeah. like when, whenever clubs decide to go out of the League Cup, which yes. is coming up this week, yes. uh, Manchester United played Northampton live on uh, uh, Talk Sport. And yeah. Everton are playing. Who are Everton playing in the League Cup? I can't remember. Uh, Norwich. Norwich. Yes. Right. I've got a story for you about Norwich coming oh, up in a little while. Really? That's yeah, great. Oh, I love stories about Norwich. Yeah. You know, well, my favourite only, place. I know because nobody ever goes. Nobody there, ever right? goes there. There's no motorway. There's no there. motorway. Yeah. yeah. But um, uh, yeah, I mean, what I was going to say was that yeah. uh, on Friday, yes. um, before all of this went on, before you went off on your uh, sojourn to Goodison, yes, um, Friday was quite a red letter day for us because we made it on clips of the week. Oh yeah. Not that's once right, yeah. but twice, right? Oh really? Uh, because remember when you accused me of losing the plot? Yes. About McCartney's banner. Going mad yes. in some way. Yes. Well, it's become one of the most popular clips of all time. Do you know, I can't even remember sport. it. Well, I'm not surprised you can't remember it. There's hardly anything you remember. Are we going to play it out again? Well, I think we should have another listen to it. But, Great. I mean, we will play it out at some point. Yeah, okay, yeah, good, good, okay. That, because I need reminding of what I... All I was trying to make out was mm. that nobody knows the names of the band members of McCartney's latest band because they haven't actually played well, with them Well, lots of people actually did tweet them into us. Yeah, yeah, well, you said that, but, I mean, uh, anyway. But apparently on uh, on uh, Hawksby and Jacobs, um, the yes. clip was so popular that oh, they yeah? got so many requests they had to keep playing it. They played it twice. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh, my God. So, you know, fame at last. And you? who comes out of this as the hero and the villain of the piece? You well, come out of, like, you're trying to make out you're the hero of this I'm piece, I'm not saying you? that. Why don't you have a listen to it? Yeah. And then you can be yeah. a judge. Right, we will. Oh, no, we haven't got it yet, apparently. OK. No, well, we did have it, well, but it's just it's disappeared. Well, that doesn't matter. We'll, we'll listen to it in a minute we'll or two. We'll listen to it in a minute. Now, a couple of other stories that we have to talk about, yes. right? First of all, on the front pages, right, there's yes. a massive story yes. uh, that seems to have upset everybody mm. about Gemma Arterton, yes. uh, who was upset on uh, ITV's uh, Lorraine show yesterday yes. because she was uh, quizzed over her weight. Was she Fields? Eh? Was that her name? Fields? Fields, I don't know. Well, you're the James Bond expert. Yeah, I think it was, wasn't it? It was in the... And she ended up dead because uh, he uh, he had some horizontal refreshment with her. Yeah. Um, well, that she, often happens, doesn't it? It, it did, yeah. She's a perfect English rose, but generally on In a live interview... Well, I mean, right, it wasn't right. meant to be insulting, right? No, I Kelly see. basically said to her, you yes. know, and she praised her for being sort of looking like a normal woman. Right. And not being a sort of stick insect. Yes. To which Gemma Arterton sort of said, well, hang on a second, what are you saying? You're saying yes. I'm overweight. Yes. So it's created all sorts of stink, right? Right, right. Uh, which we'll talk about. But also, mm. uh, we'll have to talk about Chris Ashton, the uh, England rugby player. Yes. Or sometime England rugby player, yes. because he's sort of in and out of the team. Uh, it seems to well, be, he's out of the team, I uh, think, mostly well, at the moment. Well, at the moment, yes. yeah. Yes. Um, I don't think Eddie Jones will be putting him back in any time soon, mm. because he could be banned for nearly a year, apparently, yeah. for biting somebody twice. Yeah, no, that's a bit odd, Twice isn't it? inside a minute. What would you do that for? Well, I don't know. 
Hmm. I really don't know. No. Plus, we'll have to talk about Jerry Barton as well. And hasn't Fellaini um, used the word crisis well, he to has. Uh, describe what's going on he at has, Manchester on the back United? Page of the Daily Mirror said that, you know, yeah, we are a crisis yeah. club. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and also, Conte apparently is in a crisis situation. Mm. Uh, Mark Hughes is in a crisis situation. And we don't know what's going on with Slaven yeah. Village at West Ham. Yeah, that's but right. we'll get to all of that uh, coming up very shortly. We are the two mics. This is Talk Sport. Indeed. <laughs> We are the two mics. There's loads going on. We've got a lot of great tweets to read out as well. Uh, Omar says this. Uh, all this talk about Mourinho. Bar, bar, bar. Team is blah, blah, blah. For once, let's give Watford FC credit for a great win on Sunday. Yes. Uh, we made United poor. Uh, Lee says, MG uh, and Porky, don't be daft. United have played sideways football for two years. Mm. Jose will get it right, mm. but it will take a season. Yeah. Hashtag Red Army. Well, it you doesn't know, usually take him a season. No. When he goes to a club. No. It I mean, didn't he, take him a season at Chelsea. Well, he won, it, he won well, the league title in his first two seasons there. Yeah, well, that took two seasons then. No, no, he won the title in the first and the second season. Oh, did he See what I mean? Win, did he not win the League Cup the first season he was at Chelsea? Uh, he yeah, won time. that as well. He yeah. won that as well. But when yeah. he came back to Chelsea the second time, yes. he, didn't win the, he didn't win the Premier League no, he that didn't. year. No, he didn't. He said it wasn't his team. That's right. And it but he won it year after. Second year, he won it the year after. Yeah. How about this from Matty B? Uh, it says, Idris, uh, Idris Guy, uh, who Everton signed for Villa, where's the name Garner, not Karner? Yeah, I said Garner. Sporky said. You said Karner. Well, I meant Garner. <laughs> You know, like the country. Like the country, yeah. yes. that's right. Um, mm. Absolutely right. Now, uh, how about this uh, MG, the Booker Prize, which is awarded for fiction. Some would say Porky's autobiography would qualify what? in 2017. I didn't even write an autobiography. Oh, well, I'm not. I have no plans to, anyway. People keep asking me to do it, actually, but yeah. I keep saying, well, my career isn't anywhere near no. over, and as far time. as I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Have you read your emails today? <laughs> exactly, you know. yeah. Uh, here's yeah. one from Becky. He says, is yeah. it possible that David Moyes and Louis van Gaal mm. could last longer at Man United mm. than Jose? Mm. The sides are there. Yeah, well, the, the, it's the air of despair which I get from Manchester United. If, mm. if what you're saying is right, you know, from reading those emails, Joe say we'll get it right, yeah. you, would, you would see an air of expectancy. Yeah. But you're not. You're getting an air of despair coming exactly. out of Manchester United. Absolutely right. It's not expectancy yeah. at all. And Rooney had a terrible game, and, yeah. and nobody really knows where it's all going to end. Yeah. Uh, now, a couple of people uh, are asking for this rant uh, of mine to be uh, broadcast. That we now Excellent. Think, I think we now have it. So Excellent. Excellent. you want to have a listen to it, and you can decide who's the hero and who's the villain. Yes. And three yes, of the people... recording? Well, he's probably recording some music, Porky. <laughs> what do you so, think? So you don't know who these three unnamed members, an unknown no, band, don't. are recording, I or don't. if they're recording, where they're recording. No, but I'm telling you it because you're such a you maniac me, about the Beatles. You, I thought you might be interested. You but if you're not interested, you can get stuck. <laughs> you okay, can, you can get lost, yeah. and you can bugger off. You can. T- you told me this is a nugget of great information. Well, I thought you'd be interested. In fact, it's a palpable piece Stick of. Stick it up your jumper. N- a palpable piece yeah, of nonsense. Bearded nons- weirdo. Pa- palpable piece of nonsense. <laughs> this know. is talk sport. I'm sick of the Beatles. What, what, I'm sick of you. What a load of rubbish. <laughs> so yeah, uh, that, that was, was Friday. Yeah, that was Friday. Yeah. yeah, okay. Well, just another brief exchange, yes, you know, exactly. And uh, and life moves on. But, but, um, but it seems to have mm. gone down very well with a lot of people. Well, so. excellent. Good. I'm. Uh, we're here to entertain. Remember Indeed. that. Never forget that. Absolutely. Um, that's great. Now then, listen. We're talking to a chap tonight who's going to vindicate everything I've said. Well, he made over it. the years. He made it about trees communicating with each other. Yes. People have been laughing and mocking, and you know, you mad porky and all that. But I told you years ago, did I not? Well, you told me trees, trees talk to each other. Well, you told me that trees communicate with each other by yeah. some root system. That's, that's right. You told me. That's so right. Now, I don't know if this guy's going to say that's true. Well, it, it, it's not just that. They make noises. Trees make noises, which only other trees can understand. Oh, yeah. And, and, but, I mean, it doesn't matter. The, ma- the method of communication is probably still up for debate. They do communicate with each other. I know that. Right. And, for instance, when thousands of trees were blown down in this country in the great... It was the great uh, gale of 87, was it? was 87, the hurricane. 80, the, the hurricane. hurricane. The hurricane, the hurricane. I mean, trees in sympathy were dying all over the world because of um, what? what had happened here. Well, how, where's the evidence for that? Well, it's, it's something I read. It's a theory I've read. I've, a I've done a lot of research so on how theory, trees uh, um, talk to each other. Yeah. Well, it's a theory. Yeah. 
But, it, you know... It, 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 well, where did trees drop dead because of the, the pain that they witnessed in Seven well, Oaks? Well, they do. They do. They have done. And uh, and, and, and I'm sure when we get the expert on tonight, he'll yeah. be able to back that one up well, as well. he's a professor in entomology at the University of California, exactly. Davis, right? Exactly. Uh, he's author of a book called Plant Sensing and Communication. Yes. His name is Richard Carban. Yes, that's right, yeah. So, you know... Why are you already mocking the man before he's actually come not, on the why, show? Why does it sound like I'm mocking him? Because you just um, impersonated an American accent. I gave you a in, Californian accent. In a... In a, in a frivolous and <laughs> mocking fashion. Not at all. It was. No. It was. You've already you've already decided that this guy is a loony, haven't you? Well, he calls... You know what he calls the tree method of communication? Go on. The wood wide web. Yeah, that's... Uh, there you the go. the world wide the, web. Well, there you go. Well, there that sounds go. a bit nutty Well, to that me. sounds very much like they communicate via roots, and, mm. and it is a web, literally a web network of, uh, yeah. of intercommunication. Really? Without a shadow of a well, doubt. We'll see whether he can completely and utterly confirm what yep. you've said. What well, you've maintained before, yes. so they talk to you as well. Uh, well, I... I didn't say they talk to me. What I said is well, they, they communicate. Yeah, but that is a form of communication. I'm sitting on my uh, balcony at the old penthouse there in the roof mm. garden, OK? Yeah. And, and this would happen usually in the spring mm. um, as we come towards summer and almost certainly in the autumn as oh, we yeah. go into winter. Uh-huh. And those trees are communicating somehow. They're, they're waving, they sway, they tip forward, they tip back. I, I believe they're communicating with me. Really? I do, yeah. Yeah, all right. Well, that with that shadow right. out. And I wave back at them as well. I feel I should. I feel that they need to be aware of my attention to their efforts to communicate. So you're walking around generally waving your arms in the air? Sometimes, really? yeah, I am. Yeah, yeah. sometimes I am. Has anyone ever seen you doing that? Uh, I don't know. But, I mean, there's nothing really more uplifting in this country than walking through a wood, a small wood. And there's lots of small woods down in Surrey. When I'm walking across the downs... Copses? Um... Foxes. Copses. Oh, copses. Yeah, yeah, Cops copses. Is a yeah. Small wood. Yeah, there's a place called Banstead. Um, I know Banstead. You used to live in Banstead. Yeah, Banstead Wood. Yeah. And uh, it's not big wood, but I mean, it's got lots of little trees in it, and you can small follow wood. it down. Sorry? It's a small wood. Small wood, yeah, and yeah. you can follow it all the way down to almost to the M25, really. Why? And, and, and eh? Why would you? Well, if you're walking that way. Why would you want to walk towards the M25? Well, because it's south, and, and you'd get from the north downs to the south downs. Yeah, but then you, you make the M25, you can't get any further. You go under it, through a under tunnel. It. Yeah, through well, a they've tunnel. Got the they've got tunnels under the M25? They've got tunnels under the M25, and, well, roads, you know, like a road oh, goes okay. under it. And, uh, and they've got um, walkways over it, of course. Really? You know? Yes. Okay. So, How about this yes. from uh, Red Seal, who says, there's, mm. uh, they're called root exudates, Mr. Parry. Root exudates. Tonight you may learn about mycorrhizal fungi. That's great. I Good. don't know what I'm that means. I went to learn about that. That's excellent. Okay. Now, How about this from William? Mm. Uh, here's one for you, uh, yeah. uh, Porky. On this day, September the 20th, 1972, yeah. police find cannabis growing on Paul and Linda McCartney's farm. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I don't think anything happened there because, my, to my memory... They they claimed ignorance. Did they? And and I think that well, was they accepted. Said it wasn't theirs. Yeah, I think that was accepted. Yeah, it's a very big estate. It's, it's on the same. Mull of Kintyre. It's one of my favourite. Oh, it was up uh, there. It wasn't down in Sussex. No, no, it's one of my favourite uh, McCartney songs. Yeah. Well, we're going to try my not to talk too much about the Beatles. Kintyre. Yeah, least, I agree. Least of all, sing about. Them. I agree. People you... people think I'm obsessed by the Beatles, right? Well, you are a bit, aren't you? Uh, well, I'm not obsessed by the Beatles. I, it's just that I have always looked up to quality in any form. So. Yeah. For instance, That's why you like me so much, isn't it? No, I, I, no, no. I, in many ways, I detest you, but I have to work with you. Um, I was very you don't di- have to. I was very distressed again today to find out that um, uh, Michael Schumacher. Yeah. Has, has not walked a step since no. his terrible accident. No. Did you know how that came out? Mm. It came out because uh, I think it was an Italian newspaper, certainly some publication in Europe, printed a story saying that with the help of AIDS, he was up and walking, you know, a few yeah. paces at a time. Right. And the family actually went to court to have this overturned and, and have uh, a retraction printed. Well, to they've say, been very, very clear no, he, about their privacy, he is not walking, and he, and he hasn't been walking. Yeah, but, you know, what you find out in a lot of situations where tragedy strikes like this is, you you know, you you get stories like this because it's, it's optimistic. People yeah. want to think that he is going to get better. But the family said, no, there has been no movement. So... That is, that is one of the world's great sporting tragedies, without a shadow of a doubt. A it man really like is. him, as fit as he was, as genius as he was, as brilliant as he was, as outstandingly, you know, head and shoulders above other drivers as he was, and literally now um, a man without a, an ability to yeah. to communicate, really, and uh, it's terribly, terribly sad. It is very mm, sad, mm, indeed. Mm. Uh, now, I told you I had a story about Norfolk for you, right? Yes. Apparently well, I don't want to talk about Norfolk. Well, because Norfolk's interesting. Isn't you know? Norfolk uh, Alan Partridge country? Um, I suppose it is. Yeah, yeah, I suppose it is, isn't it? Yeah, I think it is. Uh, mm. uh, it is that neck of the woods. Yeah, and our producer Ollie is from Norfolk. I'm is he? Told, oh yeah. right, okay, yeah. So when you say when nobody goes there, you know, a lot mm. of people come out of there. 
and maybe don't go back. But apparently it's the only county yeah, yeah. with archaeological evidence of four human species. Yeah, really? Antecessor. Did they all mutate into one or something? Heidelbergensis, which I don't know whether that's anything to do with Heidelberg. What? Heidelbergensis. What's that? It's a part, 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 form of human species, apparently. No, it's not. Neanderthals, right, and us. Neanderthals, I know about. Heidelbergenitis, or whatever it's Heidelbergensis. called. Heidelbergensis. Heidelbergensis. Yeah. So it must Heidelberg, be an early form of human. Heidelberg. <laughs> Heidelweiss. Oh, yes, that's right, yeah. Um, but uh, but I've never heard of that, uh, that particular Well, I must admit, I haven't heard of it species. either. Species. Mm. Uh, but this is all coming from uh, a very learned uh, organisation in Norfolk. Yes, so, yes. So, um, you know, it's quite interesting. We might have to look into that. that. We, yeah. might have to get a, uh, we might have to get some kind of expert on the show yeah, sure. talking about that. Uh, talking of experts, we're going to talk to Tim Vickery coming up in a little Excellent. while. Excellent. Uh, we'll find out what he makes of what's going on in the Premier League. And also, mm. uh, the Paralympics have just finished, haven't they? Yeah, have. So you can tell us whether they've had much of an effect on Brazil. Yes, that's right, absolutely. Mm. Mm. Now, getting back to um, slight football matters. Yes. Joey Barton uh, found himself in a bit of a pickle. Yeah, what is wrong with him? Well, I don't know what's wrong with him, but the interesting thing is, this is I, I, I can't believe this is a conspiracy theory. It, um, this spat he's had with uh, a player at Rangers and with yeah. his own manager, Mr Warburton, yeah. coincides with the publication of the first um, serialisation of his book. Oh, in The Guardian? No, it's uh, the one I'm reading about. It's in the Daily Mail. Oh, is it? Um, so... And, and uh, actually, doesn't say the name of the books. I, th- I think what they've done is they've done the interview ahead of the serialisation. Right. You see what I mean? Yeah. So because uh, I saw, I think I saw something on the uh, yeah. on the front of the Sport and the Guardian. Oh yeah, uh, where it's got a quote from Jerry Barton: "Someone with my character is a borderline kamikaze pilot." Yeah. Exclusive interview, pages six and seven. Really? So I don't know whether they've got uh, they've got the book or whether uh, the mail have nicked it. Oh, I don't, I don't, well, I think the mail the mail haven't nicked it, but they've uh, they've got a big interview with him. There's a picture of him holding a skull. Holding a skull, okay, yeah. Uh, oh, I see it, yeah, yeah. Someone with my... Uh, yeah, I've got it, yeah. Six or seven. Now, that's interesting, that, because uh, Matt Lawton, a very fine um, sports writer, has got an exclusive interview as well yeah. uh, with Joey Parton in the mail. So, so there's plenty of exclusives all over there. Yeah, yeah, there are. Yeah, let's see what it says here in the... Uh, I mean, The Guardian, not usually in the business, are going around buying up uh, books, you know, for lots of money. Mm. Uh, what does it say here? Um, well, he was on Talk Sport on Friday. Talking to, to uh, Jim White. Wasn't yeah, he? I know he was. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it says here, "No Nonsense" by Joey Barton is published by Simon and Schuster. Yeah, they're, they're my publishers, actually. Are they? Yes. And what was the last book you published with them? Uh, it was the uh, biography of a Premier League footballer. Well, Wayne Rooney. No. Well, another one. Another one. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, which one? Well, I can't say. <laughs> What, do you mean it never came out? Well, it hasn't come out yet. Oh, it hasn't come out Put yet. It that way. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, yeah. you're working on another project. Uh, well, you, you know... You haven't said anything about no, this. No, 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 no. You no. haven't said that you're working on another no, project. No, no, I'm, I'm not. The project is worked upon. It's okay. done. It's done. Okay. But uh, there's um, there's a bit of a uh, discussion going well, on about publication dates. You don't need to explain that. No, no, no. Yeah, well, no, I don't. Will no. this be a two mics kind of thing then? Uh, no, 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 no. no. It's just something you've done on your own. Yeah, yes, yes, yes absolutely. Okay. Yeah. yeah, something right. that uh, you we'll know. We'll have I... to find out some more about your trip to Everton and back, by the way. Well, well no, that was great. I've heard enough stories about it, but well, not well, now. there's no stories to hear. There's no stories well, there's to hear. There's bound to be stories to hear. No, there aren't. Uh, I want to know how you avoided It was great. Everybody loved seeing me. Don't worry. I don't want to know how you avoided being spotted because last time you were up there, there was loads of pictures of you. You know, hailing a cab, getting on the train. Yes. See, there was accounts of you singing on the train on the way back. Yes. We didn't get any of that this time. Well, that's because I wasn't singing on the train on the way. Profile. Yeah, yeah, very low profile. Mm, yes, okay. indeed. Right, yeah. Well, we'll yeah. quiz you more about that coming up very, very shortly. Uh, Tim Vickery is coming up as well. This is Talk Sport. Talk Sport, we are the two mics. We've got Tim Vickery coming up in a little while. We'll find out what he makes of all of these crises that seem to be hitting uh, very big clubs in the Premier League. Mm. Uh, at Manchester United, at Chelsea, uh, Stoke City, you'd have to say, uh, who finished very well last year. Suddenly they're in a bit of a crisis. Mark Hughes has just been found eight, fined 8,000 quid. Uh, and also, of course, uh, West Ham aren't doing too well, are they? What do you think is going on there? Um, do you West think it's Ham. the curse of the new stadium? Well, I don't know. Is it the curse of the new stadium or not? I don't know. But how can a team who looked so optimistic last season, you know, with... Um, I mean, do you remember at the start of last season, Bilic got a series of outstanding results yeah. against top teams? Yeah, he did. Teams that would normally have always finished above West Ham. And um, and and they were they were sailing along. I think they lost their first two home games, but then they won about four big away games yeah. against big teams, and it turned it all round, all that kind of stuff. And then all the optimism about the new ground, you know, and 
then all the celebration about it. Well, and every interview you read with either the Golds yes. uh, or the Sullivans yeah. uh, or Dame, uh, what's her name? Um, uh, Dame Brady. Dame Brady. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was all about positivity. Yeah, and exactly. Yeah, and you, you know, we're going to be in the Champions League. Yeah, and, you know, West right, Ham yeah. are going to be up there in the top four. Yeah, yeah. It seems to have gone a bit wrong. Yeah, it seems to have gone a bit wrong. That's right. And, um, you know, you have to say now they're in a period of... Uh, Flux. Re- yeah, well, reorganisation, really. I see that Mr Sullivan and Mr Gold have said we will sort these problems out, but yeah. they're pretty extensive problems because in order to sort them out properly, I think they'd have to revise a, a, a big part of the seating plan to put people who are like-minded next mm. to each other, which yeah. doesn't seem to have happened. Right. You know, they seem to have, uh, have, have distributed them around a much, much bigger stadium. And I think that could be the problem. Who knows? But I'm sure, I mean, Mr Gold and Mr Sullivan have been successful in most other things they've done in their life, so I assume that they'll get, they'll get yeah, it sorted. Indeed. Yeah. Uh, Roy says this, uh, did you know the trees here, and he lives over in uh, the sort of southwest of America, right. suck up gold and silver in their roots, then deposit it in the soil around it? Yeah, I, I'm sure that's he true. Goes, Hashtag easy money. What well, does it mean you can go out and just pick it up, does it? Um, well, well, does he mean that it sucks it up through the roots and is then expelled through the leaves? Is I, that, is I, that what I he's saying? I guess so, yeah. I guess, well, it pushes I guess up through the soil. Or yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Stephen says, Joe says it's like a Roman emperor fiddling while Old Trafford burns. Yeah. I fear bottom half of the table by Christmas. Well, I'm not sure about that. I mean, that would uh, that'd be a terrible... Um, what's the word? Disappointment, I suppose. Uh, well, it'd for be one very disappointing. Else. Yeah, but... Um, I, I do believe that Joe say is not the man he was three years ago. I don't think he is. No. And and I'm not sure where it all kind of evaporated well, for him, you know, you know what I mean? My, you know my theory on all of the things that happened at Chelsea, yes. which we haven't repeated quite, yes. but I mean, I think that something happened there yeah. uh, which has changed him forever, Yeah, uh, not, not just, um, you know, football-wise. No, you could well be right. Mm. You could well be right. Mm. Now, there's lots of other issues which I need to talk to you about, and one of the favourite ones for me is this. You know the guy who cuts whales in half, uh, no, uh, sharks in half and all what? that kind of stuff? Damien Hurst. Oh, Damien Hurst, yeah. in da- Damien Hurst, OK? Yeah. Um, well, he doesn't really do that anymore, does he? Well, I think he did. But and also he had a whole crowd of people that did it for him. He did have a whole crowd of uh, people, yeah. Um, can I just say mm. that he was the first beneficiary of a new theory which has swept the world now, looking yeah. back on it, to say that if somebody calls something art yeah. long enough, yeah. like an unmade bed, yeah. or like cutting a shark in half, mm. or like Yoko Ono used to do, um, painting minute words on the ceiling yeah. and then dangling a magnifying glass next to it at the end of a ladder so yeah. he had to go up and actually read it. Yeah. You know, that's art. Well, who's and to say it, it isn't art, though? Well, well, what I'm saying is if you go around telling people this is art long mm. enough, people start believing it. Yeah. And it then becomes valuable art because there's only one of them. You see what I mean? Well, it only becomes valuable art if somebody's daft enough to start paying good, very, very, much, very big yeah. money for it, right? Yeah. Because did you not remember that when Charles Sartre had his gallery? Yes. Right, back in the sort of late 80s, early 90s. Yes. And he's single handedly made an awful lot of artists very wealthy yeah. and single handedly uh, sort of more or less yeah, supported the by market by recognizing them as art by buying them that's right yeah and then as did, soon yeah. as he bought them suddenly yeah. everyone went oh my god you it, know well, it this must, must be, be worth a lot of money well yeah this comes from the fact that the um, first experiment in 1973 the artist michael craig martin oh, yeah. put a glass of water on a shelf mm. uh, installed it in an art gallery and told people it was in fact an oak tree did he? Yeah, it was bought for thousands of pounds. How did he convince people? It's, it's a glass tree. of water. Right. Um, but don't you remember, I mean, I remember one guy, there was a there was a drought about three or four years ago in uh-huh. the summer. So this brilliant guy, he, uh, he rented a space in an art gallery, yeah. had a tap installed, mm. and then switched the tap on right. and let water run away during mm. the drought. Right. And this was, I mean, this is a sensation in the art world. Yeah, really? this is a, well, it was a Where did the water go? Down a plug hole. Really? Uh, yeah, yeah. Was it not fined? In buckets or anything. Was it not fined? No, because, you know, it wasn't against the law. It was just a bit of a drought. Well, was it a hosepipe ban? No, well, I think it was a hosepipe ban, but it wasn't a hosepipe. It was a, it was a tap in, in, a, in a sink. <laughs> right. and, and people were coming and taking videos of it and being charged you know, 100 quid a yeah. time and all this kind of yeah. stuff for a tap that was basically right. uh, tipping water out. Blimey. Anyway, um, now... Uh, I remember once walking into the Tate Gallery... Yes. Uh, into their sort of modern section, which they have. Yes. And this is the one down in Pimlico rather than the, right. you know, the Tate sort of yeah. modern. Yeah. And um, there was a pile of bricks. Right. Basically. Yes. Um, in, the, in the sort of, as you walked into this one mm. gallery. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't in any kind of form, it yeah. didn't seem. It was literally just a pile, pile of bricks. Of bricks yeah. That looked as if it just been dumped there. Yeah. And that was a, a piece of and art. And that was art. But, you know, I mean, the trouble is, in the end, how mm. can you say it isn't? Yeah. Well, it says here, depending on your point of view, 
Uh, it's either a visionary work of art, this is the glass of water, OK, yeah. uh, pricking the bourgeois sensibilities and mediocrity of the age, bourgeois. or it is the most annoying thing that an artist can do uh-huh. until Damien Nurse saw a shark and a chainsaw and had an idea to uh, cut it in two. Yeah. If you fall into the latter category, it's bad news. Mm. Uh, Craig Martin, who was the guy with the glass of water, may have had a point. Researchers have shown that the act of defining an object as art really does change how you feel about it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that's probably true. But I mean, I would, I would imagine you could have a very long and philosophical conversation yeah. with, with many people mm. about what is art, because nobody yeah. can really define it. I mean, can yeah. you define it? No. no. I suppose art is in the eye of the beholder. Yeah. That's the only thing I can say. So but, is everything art then? Well, it says here the concept is arguably the central idea behind movements such as objet trouvé. Right. Uh, what does tr- trouvé mean? Trouvé. Trouvé? Yeah. Objet, I know is object, that's French. I bet you trouvé is something to do with um, treasure. Treasure? Yeah, yeah I like think it is. Treasure something trove or something like that. Find, yeah. yeah. So, so it's so it, an object of uh, wonder or treasure or something like that, right, in which objects such as uh, Marcel Duchamp's urinal, that one passed <laughs> me by, I'm afraid. Duchamp? Yeah. Didn't p- pass you by, yeah? Yeah. Uh, I used to play for Chelsea. Uh, no, it was Deschamps. Uh, Duchamp's urinal or Tracy Emin's unmade bed can be yeah. considered art if they're put into an artistic context, well, if you put it in such an art as gallery. a gallery. Yeah, that's right, yeah. It also... yeah but, but all art doesn't have to be in a gallery, does it? Well, I don't know. I mean, if you've it... got a painting, for example, yes. my, my father painted, which yes. you then bought, yes, that's and right. you decide to hang it in the flat occupied by an Egyptian doctor, yes, that's right. it's still art. It doesn't it's still have to go art, in yeah. a gallery, does it? No, it doesn't have to go in a gallery, no. But, I mean, you have to look at art every day to define it as art. No. No, see, I don't think you do. See? So it says here, it also relates to a theory propounded by Immanuel Kant. Yes. Right, well, we talked I, about I, him before, I mentioned we? him last week, yeah. Did you? Yeah, that's right, yeah. yeah. You thought I was swearing at you. Yeah, I did, yeah. In his critique of judgment, when he argued that in viewing art, we must engage differently. Mm. One must not be in the least prepossessed in favour of the existence of the thing, but must preserve complete indifference in this respect in order to play the part of judge in matters of taste. So you have to be neutral, in other words. In, indeed. That yeah. was written in the 1920s, yeah. OK? Yeah, well, that was when he was around, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, Can't. Yeah. It, it, so what this guy did is, to prove his point is, uh, a guy called René Magritte. René. Magritte, yeah. M- yeah, like Magret, like yeah. Magritte, you know, a French guy. Yeah, he's an artist. Oh, he's a f- an artist, is he? Yeah, OK, René Magritte. A yeah. Belgian, apparently. A Belgian, right, OK. He questioned matters of existence with his the treachery of images, right? Mm. And one of the most famous was to paint a picture of a pipe, right. you know, like your, your well, dad like a, would smoke, you know what I mean? A yeah. pipe, you, you know. never smoked a pipe? No, me, never. No. You? No, I said my dad never smoked a pipe. No, no, my dad never smoked a pipe either, you know. But some, so it's not like a pipe your dad would smoke. Well, it's some people smoke pipes, <laughs> don't they, you know. My but, grandfather smoked a pipe. Did he? Yeah. Uh, I but don't he know. also took snuff. Snuff, you yeah. stick it up your nose, don't you? You do. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, so, um, treachery image. An image of a pipe with the words underneath... Ceci n'est pas une pipe. <laughs> so, what's your problem? Hmm? It's hmm? just the expression on your face when you said une pipe. Yeah, well, <laughs> well, I know what that means in French. That means this is not a pipe. Really? So that makes well it. Done. Yeah, th- that makes it uh, artistic. It's not much of a phrase, really, is it? No, here. Yeah, what about is this not one? A pipe. The, you know, that's right. <laughs> now, researchers at the European College yeah. of Neuropsychopharmacology. What's your, what's your problem again? <laughs> eh? hmm? Can you not say it a bit slower? <laughs> I see, I mean, yeah, yeah. Researchers at the European College of Neuropsychopharmacology's Congress in Vienna. Yeah, pharmacology, I know about. Yeah, that's right. Have presented. Uh, 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 I've lost my place. Presented research. <laughs> test, I know that word got me. Uh, research testing the idea. They gave a group of 24 students pictures yeah. to evaluate while their brain activity was measured. Mm. The students were told either that pictures were photographs or that they were works of art. Oh, yeah. And the, and the students had to make their minds well, hang up. hang on. How can it not be a photograph and a work of art? Well, I don't know. I mean, funny enough, you told me about our old friend, Mickey Brennan. Yeah, because I saw him on uh, Sunday. And you've told me about his, his photographs. They're quite interesting, aren't they? They are. Well, we'll talk, talk some more about that because we had a very yeah. nice afternoon, actually, when your name came up. Oh, yes. Uh, you know, we had yes. to, uh, told a few stories of the old times in New York. You that's know, right. lives in Costa Rica now. Yes, that's right. So, yeah. uh, and, and in fact, uh, I had I put a picture on Facebook. Yeah. Uh, and I've got a comment from uh, one Mr. Paul Callan. Oh, yes. Uh, who asked about him as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, Paul. So, uh, we might do a bit 
of that. Paul's still alive then. Uh, must, he be, is. Um, must be. Just about. Message. Yeah, yeah, well, he was so, yeah. last night. I yeah. mean, you know. Yeah, that's as right. Far yeah. As I know. His, now, his daughter works in journalism now somewhere, doesn't she? She does. She's on a magazine, I think. Yeah, she's she's one of the three AM girls. Oh, that's right. She did. Yeah, that's mm. right. Yeah. Very yeah. nice girl. Yes. Uh, now I've got a. Th- I've got a. Just before we talk to Tim Vickery, very very quickly, I've got three bizarrely three birthdays today that I promised I'd read people out. Okay. Uh, happy birthday. So here's the first one. Uh, this is from Mark. Yes. This is my compadre Neil Olson turns forty. Uh, on, on the 19th, which is yeah. last night. Could you please wish him a happy birthday on the show? Yeah. So that's the first one. Very so happy birthday. To Neil. Yeah. Uh, long-time listener and tweet contributor. It's my birthday today. Uh, I'm 29. Can Ooh. I get a mention? Says Joe. Yeah, Joe, 29 years of age. Yeah. Happy birthday, pal. May you have many more. And Nadidi says, my boyfriend Wilson is a huge fan of the two mics. Right. If you could only get you guys to give him a birthday uh, on Tuesday, please. What's his name? Uh, his name is Wilson. Wilson. A so very. Do, do it say how old he is? Uh, it doesn't. No, OK. Well, very happy birthday, pal, and I uh, hope you have a great day. Thank you very much indeed. Coming up next is Tim Vickery on TalkSport. We are the two mics. Mr. Parry is here. I'm Mr. Graham, of course. We're going to talk to Tim Vickery uh, live in Brazil very, very shortly. Uh, a couple of quick tweets for you, though. One from Nick here. Very interesting. He says, mm. the theory doing the mm. rounds is that Mike Parry is actually an extended performance piece from noted Belgian surrealist Jacques Comte. Oh, that's very nice, isn't it? Thank you very much indeed for that innuendo. <laughs> that's not an innuendo. It's the guy's name. I think it's an innuendo. No. Uh, and here's one from mm. uh, Captain Beefheart. New art feature for the Tate Modern. A scruffy room littered with pizza boxes and empty red bull cans and sat on a battered couch. Porky, babbling nonsense. I would pay to see that. Well, you know, who knows? If somebody offered me enough, enough money, £100,000, yeah. to sit in the Tate Art Gallery, yeah. surrounded by can, empty cans of Red Bull yeah. and empty pizza boxes and on a would, scruffy couch, would be art. which have been torn to pieces by your dog Ziggy, yeah. then I would do it. And Rick says, yeah. uh, some of Mr Parry's stories are works of art, as tall as the giant redwoods in America's fine forests. Oh, really? So you do have some fans out there. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, let's talk to Mr Vickery, because uh, mm. we haven't spoken to him for a very, very long time. Mm. Uh, not since the Olympics started. Started and ended, uh, and the Paralympics started and ended. Tim, a very good morning to you. Yeah, I've never been compared to a Belgian surrealist. I'm quite jealous about that. Yeah, well, yeah, you know, well, you've you know. got some work to do, Paris. Tim, obviously. Mm, mm, you know. Exactly, no, exactly. I, I, clearly, clearly. You've know, <laughs> yeah, got, up and, you got to get uh, busy, mate. Get busy. Post impressionism. Absolutely. Uh, well, what kind of, have you had a cruel summer? A long, hot summer? We've had a, we've had a very, been? very busy summer, I think you'd have to say. I mean, since. And hot, uh, I'm afraid. I think the last time we saw you, mm. which was back in. Were you here in May? Uh, yeah, that's right. You were Correct. here in yep. May. Yeah, well, since we last saw you, we haven't really stopped. You know, we've been working sort of six, seven days a week, doing live mm. shows, going up to the Edinburgh Festival. Yep. I missed the Olympics completely because I was away on holiday for two weeks mm. and I was in Spain and I didn't really ever feel like watching it, to be honest. I've seen some of the Paralympics in the last couple of weeks, but, but not a great deal just that's because right. of the times that it's on. How's it been there for you in, 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 in the process of those two events? Well, um, it, whatever you can say against these events, and there's a lot that you can say against these events... It doesn't half leave a vacuum when it's all over. You mm. don't half miss it. Um, mm. And, you know, th- th- there's, a, there's a kind of a little bit of gloom, I think, over the city. Really? Now. Yeah, with the, the, the powers ending yesterday. Because it, it's a little bit like uh, uh, we're going we're gonna to be ignored again now. We, we, well, we're back to being just another country. Well, I'm not sure if it's that or if it's the fact that whilst the Olympics were on and whilst the Paralympics were on, you could ignore all the other problems which are hurtling Brazil's way at a pace of, of the speed of light, aren't they? You know, economically, financially, politically. They're, they're, there's going to be a few r- rough months ahead for Brazil, isn't there? Yeah, well, it, we, between the two, between the Olympics and the Paralympics, mm. the president was impeached. So exactly. uh, there was no running away. You know, you can, r- you can run, but you can't hide. And the idea of these mega events that started with the, uh, the Confederations Cup in 2013, the World Cup in 2014, yes. and now with the Olympics and the Paras, the idea a decade or so ago was to showcase a booming, thriving yeah. nation of the future. Mm. By the time the thing arrived here... Yeah. Everything had changed. I mean, that the whole boom, yeah. and it has been an important boom, you know. And many people 
have bought their first fridge, their first washing machine, stuff yeah. like that. I remember my family getting those things for the first time sure, I in do. the late 60s, early 70s. Mm. They're important conquests, and, and those have happened on a massive scale in Brazil. But there was always a bit of hubris about the, the, the boom because it was always dependent on selling raw materials to China. Yeah. As soon as China slowed down, then the whole thing has, become, has come skidding to a halt, and that's brought lots of tensions to the surface. And at the moment, the country is very, very polarised, especially, I think, on class lines. Mm. So, uh, you know, the, w what we have now, with the, you know, after the Lord Mayor's show, when the world turns its back and, and, and uh, we're ignored again, mm. we have a country with, uh, where economic boom has become depression and there's political turbulence and an uncertain future. And you said mm. before the Olympics, when we last spoke, Tim, that, you know, apart from the football, which Brazil obviously did very well at, um, there wasn't going to be that much interest in much else that was going on. Is, is that how it turned out? And, and, and how bad was the, uh, I mean, we saw the pictures of the green swimming pools and uh, the troubles that there, were, that there were in the sort of the lakeside and, the, you know, the sailing and all that kind of thing. But I mean, was it well attended, would you say? No, no, but I don't think it would, I, I didn't expect it to be particularly well attended. I mean, the, the comparison with London was always going to be unfair. You know, mm. Because you're talking with, with London, you're talking about the British sporting public who are great supporters and have a sporting culture which is very, very diverse. And here, everything kind of exists. All the other sports exist on the crumbs that football leaves mm. behind. You mm. know, um, mm. I think they priced the athletics wrongly. The athletics was expensive, too expensive. So it was depressing to see you know, Mo Farah and so on do his world-class performances in front of a, of a stadium that was at best half full. Mm. That, that was depressing. But a lot of the prices were, were reasonable, um, but they don't have a sporting culture for, for a lot of these, these things. Now, the hope is that hosting the, the, the Olympics will present to the Brazilian public this, uh, uh, all of these sports. Mm. Um, and there were problems. There were problems with the sport supporter behavior as well. I mean, golf, for example. Uh, lots of people like taking photos while the golfer is in the middle of his swing, you know, mm. which is an absolute no-no if you know golf. Pure. But if you don't know golf, you just think that, that right. that's normal behaviour. Yeah. Some people pick up the balls as well. Well, yeah, yeah. I don't think anyone did uh, did quite what odd job got up to in, <laughs> in Goldfinger. Right. Sure. But I'm, I'm sure a few people were tempted. Mm. But I was talking to one golf specialist and he said, look, if that's the price that we have to pay for presenting the sport to a new audience, mm. then let's pay it. So I think a lot of the kind of half-empty stadiums and so on, I think it was, it, it, I don't think it was a big surprise. Mm. Um, the Paralympics at one point was really in trouble mm. because of low ticket sales. Uh, and the point I, I'd like to raise here is why so much of the financial burden here seems to fall on the host city. You know, mm. the IOC make a fortune from the, from the Olympics, but they didn't step in with extra money to, to help the, the, the delegations fly over to Rio. Yeah. I think too much of the burden on these mega events, it falls on the host city. And survey after survey after survey now proves, I think, pretty convincingly that the economic benefits of, uh, of, of hosting the, these Olympics mm. are not really worthwhile. You don't really get a lot for your buck. You no. spend a lot of money... Uh, and uh, not all of it is relevant to, to, the, to the needs of, no, the, of, of the city. But with the Paralympics, on the ticket sales were, were terrible at one point. Yeah. But then after the Olympics, but with people missing the event, there was a surge. And in the end, for the Paras, they sold 2.1 million. Mm. And that's down on 2.7 million, which was sold in London four years ago. Mm. But it's not a bad figure. It's a pretty good number. I think though, the right? event I, I, was, a, was a success yeah. in popular terms. I think that's a pretty good number. Now, talking about, um, talking about London, Tim, let's look back at uh, what happened to the Premier League over the first four or five games, five games so far. Your team, Spurs, are doing OK. My team, Everton, are doing even better. And uh, and I think there's going to be a bit of a rumble in the jungle in the Premier League this season. Where are Manchester United going to finish? Nobody knows. Indeed, yeah. Uh, on, on the one hand, you look at United and you think, well, the Premier League's strong, isn't it? On the other hand, you look at how easy Guardiola seems to have found mm. things early. And he, he seems to have found it much easier than I thought. Yes. I thought he'd pay a price for coming into the Premier League. I mm. thought he'd, he'd need time to, to, to bed in. And while he was still, you know, switching things around a little bit in a league with more strength in depth than the Spanish league and the German league, yep. I thought he'd have more teething troubles. But it seems to be going swimmingly for him. Yeah, it does. It does. I mean, not just swimmingly, but in contrast to the way Jose Mourinho has settled in on the other side of the city, um, Guardiola looks like a flawless genius, doesn't he? And what are you making 
Mike, of, of, of uh, Ronald Koeman at Everton? Uh, well, an awful lot. We were talking about it earlier. What seems to have happened is that uh, towards the end of last season, Roberto Martinez lost the influence that a manager should have on his squad. Players were turning up late for training, not getting fined. There, were, there was bad discipline in the use of mobile phones at training and in meetings and that kind of stuff, you know. And, all, and, and, and Gareth Barry referred to this a couple of weeks ago, and then somebody picked up on it over the weekend and said, you know, the discipline which has been reimposed has taught everybody um, how to lead the life of a professional footballer. But I think the single biggest thing he did, Tim, was taking Ross Barkley off at half-time. I mean, that is a massive move, you know. Roberto Martinez probably would never have done that because he'd think it's a massive decision, this player's very important, don't upset a young man and all that. Cohen had no uh, hesitation. He took him off and then, when we were sitting there before the game on uh, Saturday and the team sheets came round, oh look, Barkley's back in the team and he had a great yeah. game. Yeah, so that, that's, a, that's a fantastic piece of man management, mm. isn't it? That is mm. both the carrot and the stick in, in the space of a yeah. few days. But, yeah. I mean, the Both other thing that we see... And it seems to be working. But that's yeah. the other thing we see in a few days in the beginning of the season, isn't it, is how the managers are being treated by the press and by the fans, where, you know, Mourinho now questions are being asked about whether he's passed it. You know, uh, Conte's already supposedly coming under the lash of Mr. Abramovich because he didn't do too well against Liverpool. Yep. And uh, you look at Harry Kane and people ask about whether he's being managed properly. I mean, he had that terrible lunge at the weekend mm. uh, and he's now going to be out for a while. Yes, which is uh, which is a blow, isn't it? Although I quite like the look of uh, of, of this Jansen that, that that Tottenham have signed. Harry Kane is always a mystery to me, and I remember being over in in, in London just a few years ago at the mm. start of the season mm. when Harry Kane was the Europa League striker, and that's the way he was seen. You know, he's the Europa League striker. He probably won't make really make the grade in the Premier League. He's the Europa League striker, mm. and and quite often I look at him and I think. Yeah, you know, you are the Europa League striker, and then he'll do something brilliant. He, he's still a mystery to me. He's still a player that I, I haven't been able to work out. Yeah, I know. I think that is the problem. Unfortunately, Tim, we're out of time for mm -hmm. now, but we will come back to you uh, very, very soon and talk some more because we've got lots to talk about. Tim Vickery in Brazil, thank you very much indeed. We've got lots more to do uh, yep. here on the show. Coming up in the next hour, uh, we're going to talk about trees talking to each other. We've got loads of great tweets to read out. And, of course, listography coming up. <laughs> Talk Sport, we are the two mics. There will be a podcast coming out a little bit later on, of course. Uh, and if you haven't heard the Clips of the Week podcast, you can go and have a listen to that one as well. Uh, I dare say we will be tweeting that out uh, mm. throughout the course of the week. Indeed. Uh, David says, Rashford is carrying Man United. It won't last. What won't last? Him uh, carrying Manchester United yeah, so, or, yeah. or, or Manchester United's uh, um, grip on the Premier League? Well, I wonder. It could be either yeah, or. Yeah. Here's one from Ray, uh, which is uh, a subject for your show. Who are the best Brownlee, Nevilles or Mitchell brothers? What do you think, guys? Did you see that footage of yeah, the Brownlee I brothers? I did. It was incredible. You know, it? I have to say mm. that, you know, I mean, a great admiration I have for these people who do triathlons. Yes. But it can't be good for you, can it? And it um, turns out, that, I mean, I've never seen anybody... Uh, who is not intoxicated, behaving like that. No, that's right. Do you remember the famous footage of some marathon runner about 50 years ago? And he, yes. I think it was in London, actually, and he got back into the White yes. City Stadium or yeah. something. It was one legs, of the old Olympics, his, Yeah, it? his legs went to rubber. Was literally. that the one where he was helped over the line by somebody else? Yeah, I think so, yeah. yeah. And his legs went to jelly. I mean, you know, when I did my half marathon in... Um, the Great North run. I was well, perfectly walked, fit though, at the you? end. Yeah, well, I, you walked. Around. Well, I had to walk. I can't run because only a third of my heart works. So I'm pumping up <laughs> oxygen into the my way, body. I see. By the way, that you made a fraudulent slip. Uh, I, I did. And yeah, said I only, only, yeah, only I know, half I know, my heart. I know, works. I know. I know. As Doctor Banner has concluded, it's exactly. now up to forty-nine percent. Yeah. In well. fact, since then, it might have mm. gone up to over fifty percent. No, I'm on the recovery trail. No, I don't think it has. Now, listen. What do you make of this this report that has been causing a lot of mirth amongst people today? That if you want to do better in the sort of bedroom department, you've got yeah. to stand in front of a light, a bright light. Yeah, I saw and that that was tweeted at us yeah. by, uh, by one of our uh, big, yes. biggest fans, Julia. Yeah, that's right, uh, yeah. Who's coming to Liverpool, apparently. Is she coming yeah. to Liverpool? That's very yeah. nice to see her. Uh, exposure to bright light boosts the sex drive of men over 40. Yeah. Now, who does in that right... Mean, does that mean exposure to bright light immediately before or during or after? I or think what? immediately before and, and then as often as you can. Well, literally look into the light. No, yeah, you look <laughs> into the light. That's right, yeah. It shows the testosterone levels rose and they enjoy greater sexual satisfaction after regularly standing in front of a light box. Right. Um, now, this light, light box, box. Yeah, this light How box. How about a dark box? No, 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 this is a light <laughs> box. You know what this is? This is a box which is designed to try and help... Oh, sorry, sorry, you're laughing at nothing. No, it is a box. Yeah, I know. Um, designed to try and help people battle something called um, yeah. SAD. 
which is seasonal, seasonal affective, affective disorder. disorder, which I do understand people suffer from. Well, I don't. I don't understand how people can suffer from it. Yeah, but you, for example, are, are the opposite of most yes. people. I mean, you were explaining last week when it was very, very warm. Yes. And isn't it great, by the way, that the temperatures have oh, dropped a little bit? Oh, fantastic, yes. You must feel very, very happy about that. Yeah, I'm very but, happy I mean, indeed. Uh, you don't like the sun. Most no. people like to go on holiday to get the sun, you know, yes. particularly if you live in a place where there isn't much sun, yes. like Glasgow. Yes, that's right. You know, yeah. People in yeah. Glasgow yeah. head off to you know any hot place they can yes. uh, to get as much sun exposure as they can. Because, yeah. for example, the first month uh, that the mother of my children came up to Glasgow, yeah. which was June of 2002, I think right. it was, right. in, in, the, in the June, it was the 26 days of rain. Yes. Right? Yes. And if you live in that kind of climate, yeah, sure. you crave the sun. Sure. And you can get seasonally affected disorder. Yeah. I don't personally get it. Well, well what this is, uh, what this study says is it's, it's not actually they're not trying to claim that you shine bright lights on your genitals that they suddenly become more active or anything like that you I don't know. think that's a good idea no I don't think it's I don't a good think idea putting anything well. hot near your genitalia no, I, I don't. to be recommended I, I don't I don't either but what it says is it says historically and you were going on about you know um, Norfolk is the only county that's got four different types of of, of human of species, human yeah. species yeah. over the you know the hundreds of millions of years that we've been around yeah. um, what they're saying here is in the northern hemisphere the body's testosterone right mm. Um, the production of, of, of the body's testosterone naturally declines from November yeah. through April. Really? And then rises through the spring and summer with a peak in October. You now, see I the effect of they... this in reproductive rates within the month of June. Now, you see, I was going to ask you, are they basing this yeah. on the number of children born? Yes, yes. Because that might not be the right measurement, might it? Because, I mean, an awful yeah. lot of people uh, get involved in horizontal refreshment and the, and the child is not the result. Exactly. Well, in, um, particularly in this day and age, yeah. where we have, like, massive contraception yeah. uh, facilities yeah. all around the world. In exactly. fact, we need more. Really, to, no, we do to curb the population of the world. You it's make gonna, it sound like a place. Yeah, well, it, well, yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Head yeah. to the contraception facility. That's right. But it says here, light therapy might work by inhibiting the pineal gland in the brain. The what? The pineal. P i n e a l. Nothing to do with penisal. It's pineal. Right. Pineal. pineal. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll uh, take your word for it. Yeah, a gland in the brain to increase the testosterone production. But there are probably other hormonal effects. Now, you won't believe this, but remember I was telling you earlier about the uh, what is art and what is not art? Yes. And I said that I'd come from a report from, um, uh, where did I say it come from? Vienna. Art, art for art's sake. No, yeah, Vienna. You won't believe it, but the, the, the same people have come hmm. up with this. Um, uh, Professor Fagiolini, right? <laughs> So what are you laughing at? He's, uh, he's Italian. I'm sure he's he an is. Italian guy. What's he doing in Vienna? Well, um, hey. he was talking there, oh, right. right? Okay. Professor, Isn't Fag- that where you went to prove that you were a medical miracle? Was it Vienna? No, it was Germany. Oh, right. Frankfurt. Okay. Frankfurt. Yeah. Right. Um, Professor Fagiolini yes. told the European College of Neuropsychopharmacology. That's the same co- exactly. That's exactly that's what I said. Same conference. Right. Some good stories <laughs> yeah, coming out of this exactly, conference. Yeah, if yeah. you were sitting there at the Express <laughs> News desk, you'd be going, get yourself <laughs> over to there, the, yeah, uh, the conference of neuropsychopharmacology. Neuropsychopharmacology, yeah. annual congress in Vienna. Yeah. It says the increased levels of testosterone explain the greater sexual satisfaction. Now, right. I don't get this. I right. mean, it's all mad. And this sad thing, by the way, mm. I uh, when I was a senior executive at one news organisation, oh, yeah. we had one guy there, right? He was the transport correspondent, actually. He was mm. miserable as sin. Yeah. Uh, you know, never had a smile on his they face. They usually are, aren't they, transport cars? Yeah, you know, never had a smile. Well, I, actually, I had to keep him well with him because he was my first route to getting upgraded on all flights. You oh, know, really? For a, yeah, I used to pay for economy and get oh, into yeah. business class. Okay. And I got him to ring up all the PRs and get mm. me upgraded into the best seats on planes. Sure. Why not? You know, and and, and uh, uh, upgraded hotel suites and yeah. all that kind of stuff, you know what I mean? Yes. And, in fact, a lot of sort of facility trips, you know. So of I had course. to keep him well with him. Yeah. But he was a miserable guy. Mm. Was he young, old, what? Oh, he's sort of middle age, yeah. sort of middle age, mm. but, you know, pretty miserable, wore glasses, looked dour, about ten years older than he really was, really. Yeah. He sort of acted, you know. And um, so one occasion I said, oh, you know, and he supports... Oh, he's a member of the MCC, actually. Oh, was he? Yeah, yeah. So, um, so anyway, uh, that's the Marablone Criti- uh, Marie well, LeBone Cricket Club. Yeah, yeah. I know. It's yeah, just yeah. Lords, isn't it? Yeah, Lords, that's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's not actually. It's different. But, but I if mean, you're a member of the MCC, yeah. aren't you then uh, able to go to Lords at any time? Uh, well, they're based at Lords. That's their home yeah. ground, isn't it? That's so, what I mean. so I suppose that's probably true, yeah. But anyway, the point of the story is I said, um, you know, there's not much joy in your life sometimes. And he also was a Spurs fan, so probably they weren't doing too well in those days. Yeah. So, um, so he said, no, he said, I suffer from sad. 
And I'd never heard of this sad thing. I said, you suffer from sad? He mm. said, yeah. I said, well, I get a bit sad sometimes. We all do. You know, if your <laughs> dog dies or something like that, yeah. you get sad. Yeah. He said, no, you don't understand. It's a seasonal affective disorder. And I said, sorry, what is this? And, and so I'd be having this conversation with him, like, sort of November. You know, right. it's five o'clock and it's dark outside. And he said, well, I can't stand the lack of sunlight. And I said, and he told me all about it. Right. And apparently it's an accepted well, medical very, condition. Well, it is, but that was, I mean, in those days, nobody ever really talked about no, it. No, that's what I mean. And I, I couldn't get it, I couldn't get my head around it as well. I said, well, why don't you sort of, you know, when you get home, why don't you switch the lights on and then yeah. you'll be all right, won't you? Yeah. He said, no, it's to do with sunlight. Yes. It's not to do with artificial well, light. Could, what about sun lamp? If you had a sun lamp, well, yeah, but I mean, you get you get burnt under a sun lamp, wouldn't you? You know, you have well, to. No, I mean, you have to be careful. Well, you I mean, have you can only spend one or two minutes under no, a sun well, lamp. You could have you know a couple of minutes a day. Maybe that well, would help you. Uh, well, the thing is, I wonder whether it's changed these days because in in those days they had ordinary bulbs, right? Yeah. Now I've got two reading lamps at home, and they've got those tiny little you know the bulbs. really small ones. Yeah. Yeah. What are they like called? LED. LED. Yeah, I think yeah. it's LED, and, yeah. and and the thing is, it's got a bendy neck, right? Yeah. So. I Sit in my armchair. Well, as long as you don't point it anywhere near your uh, genitalia. No, no, there's not pointing near my genitalia. Getting around. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and um, and you bend it over mm. so that yeah, and it gives you fantastic light, which I would say mm. is brighter than daylight. Yes, it is brighter than daylight. Well, in my kitchen down in Sussex, yeah, we've got some of those. You know, when you get like a line of the little. Yes, spotlights, that's right. Yeah, yeah. And somehow one of them got turned around. Right. And I was standing under it the other day. Yeah. And it was starting to feel really hot. Yeah, yeah, it does get I mean, hot. The amount of I agree. Heat that was coming off this. Thing. I agree. And it's like you know probably you know I don't know three or four feet above my head. No, I totally agree. I, I, I've got those. Uh, they're planted in the ceiling of my yeah. Uh, my, these are on, my these properties. Are on, you know how they're sort of hanging from the ceiling. Yes. But they're on a, on a bar. Yeah, almost. I see. Yeah, yeah. No, my, mine are planted in the ceiling, and mm. they get, they do get very hot. In fact, I don't even need to t- turn the heater on in the kitchen because uh, it keeps it warm for the light. Yeah. Exactly That's absolutely right. right. But I couldn't understand this. And and do you know when I first saw those LED lights? Um, you know when Clinton won his first election? Yeah. And we all piled down to Little Rock in 92. Arkansas. Yeah. 92, that's right, yeah. No, it was 91, wasn't it? He was, he was uh, yeah. inaugurated in yeah, 92, yeah. 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 And, um, and these, all these lorries turned up, you know, huge blinking lorries with light systems mm. because he was going to come out onto the, um, the deck of the, what was it? The, uh, well, I suppose it was the, it wasn't the mayor or, it wasn't the um, governor's mansion, was it? It was, it was the headquarters of the Democratic Party in Little Rock. Oh, uh, OK. That's right. I don't and, know, I wasn't there. Yeah, yeah, I was, yeah. I've been there for about a week, I think. Mm. And, uh, and he came out, and then all the lights came on, and it was the weirdest feeling, because it was the middle of the night. It was yeah. like four o'clock in the morning, yeah. three or four o'clock in the morning, deep in Arkansas, mm. And it was like being on the moon yeah. because it was so bright. Yeah. It was unbelievable. Yeah. It was much brighter than daylight. It's, much, like, much it's brighter. like those uh, the Grand Prix they have at night. That's right. Yeah, in Singapore. In, yeah, they went to Singapore. They yeah. went in Bahrain. Yeah, uh, and the one, I'm not sure about the Abu Dhabi one, but I mean, yeah, it's, sure. it's, it's the, the last one of the season in yeah. Bahrain. Yeah. it always looks like daylight. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it's yeah. very I, weird indeed. I totally agree. Now, lots of people are sending tweets in on this subject. Oh yeah, uh, Ian says looks like Porky will be off down the electrical store to buy some floodlights for some reason. Yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah, um, Becky says if bright light improves men's sex life, please get Porky some really dark sunglasses now and that's, that's from women everywhere that's a that's a bit harsh that is a bit harsh and people are saying uh oh, that's why mg always wears sunglasses you don't need it with any more sex drive oh that's a bit harsh yeah well. it's a bit harsh but i did also i i heard about this story earlier in the day before i did some research oh, on yeah. it and i did in the fact time, by the way. I, I, no, I put out a very funny tweet did you saying that it would need all the lights uh in the floodlights at wembley stadium yeah in order to stimulate your fat, blubbery mass. Yeah, it wasn't very funny. Really, I thought was it was funny. Did you? I thought it was funny. Well, Loads of people re- returned it and said they thought it was very funny as well. Returned it, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You, know, right. you know, replied to it. Replied yeah. to it. All right, well, we'll talk some more about that coming yes. up. I've got some more uh, very, very interesting tweets. Uh, don't forget, hashtag listography. Uh, give us a few ideas for later on. Yes. This is Talk Sport. This is Talk Sport. We are the two mics. The Chicago Bears are seven three up on the Philadelphia Eagles. What do you think of that, Mr. Parry? Nothing. I don't think anything of it. Nobody in, the in this country. Quarter. No, yeah, second quarter. Is yeah. that right? How yeah. many quarters are there? Uh, there are four. Four. Yeah, of course, As because that's what a quarter is. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, how long does that last? 
Uh, well, it's technically it's, 15 minutes. Exactly, but it's usually but three it, hours But it game. takes a little bit longer than that because yeah. there's a lot of stoppages in yeah, the game. Yeah, it's, it's a ridiculous oh, look, game. Brandon Graham. Yeah, Brandon Graham. No yeah. relation. Yeah, no, no relation to you. Mm. Mind you, would want to be a relation of yours. Well, a lot of people um, would, actually. But, I mean, You'd be surprised. you know, the only people who actually, um, you know, go on about uh, American football in this country are those who want to think they are incredibly... Uh, detailed see, in their knowledge of overall sport. You did know what you I mean? not see that there was a big uh, event actually on Saturday, I think it was, in Regent Street. They shut down Regent Street and they had a kind yeah. of whole end, uh, sort of exhibition of NFL stuff. Did they? Players turned up. No, and, I didn't know, see that. No. There was all kinds of stuff going on. And if on. I had, I'd have walked straight past it. Well, funnily it's enough, of no interest to me whatsoever. Well, funnily enough, a guy tweeted out and he, yeah. wrote, and he covers the NFL yeah. uh, for, and I'm not quite sure exactly who, magazine or other. Yeah. And uh, he tweeted out saying, you know, no other sport could do this. Yes. You know, the NFL stops yes. traffic in London. Mm. And I said, well, actually, almost anybody could do it. If you close down Oxford Street, anybody could yeah, do it. Yeah, well, also, any, you know, you yeah. really could. Almost anybody could do it. Exactly. Did you see what happened last night? No. In the middle of Piccadilly Circus? No. Piccadilly Circus was shut down last night. Why? By an impromptu appearance of some random supercars. Really? Yeah. Didn't I last see a random appearance of some supercars where Mr. Abramovich, owner of Chelsea, got uh-huh. out his collection of supercars from his garage yeah. and took them to some show somewhere? Oh, did he? Didn't you see them? No. They're worth about eight million quid. Really? Literally, eight well, million quid. There was something like five million quid worth of cars. Right. And they just they're called the, the Piccadilly yeah. uh, Street Racers or something like that. Really? And they're all very wealthy people with Lamborghinis, yeah. uh, Audi R8s, and uh, Ferraris. And they and they came. They brought to Piccadilly the central yeah. Piccadilly to a standstill. You couldn't get around them at all. Don't you get fed up when people close down parts of the capital yeah. of uh, London for events which are uh, usually being carried out to the pleasure of tiny minorities? Mm. You know, there might be cyclists. Well, apparently people were, were ringing the police to yeah. say, you know, can you clear this traffic? Exactly. And the exactly. police, and they said, because the, because they attracted such a crowd, yeah. people were taking pictures of yeah, all, yeah. all these beautiful cars, yes. um, they said they can't do anything. No, and they then said see, yeah. that these people weren't committing any kind of crime. Yeah, don't you realise that we have a commercial, you know, heritage in this country which is already being crushed to death by the ridiculous um, um, appearance of cycle lanes all over the place, which makes it very, very much more difficult to do business in um, in this city. Yeah. And that we don't need any more, um, you know... Well, um, you would have not been happy. We don't need any more curbs to the freedom of mm. movement in the in the uh, the city. Now, if you think nobody's interested in the NFL, how about this yeah. tweet from Alan, yeah. uh, who says, is anyone even watching the World Cup of Hockey? Mm. I'm from South Carolina, and I think I'm the only one. World Cup of uh, Hockey, is that uh, going on at the moment? Are you it? guys watching it? Well, I have hang, to say, uh, we're not. Is this men's hockey or women's hockey, I or both? Well, it, I don't know. Right, OK. Uh, well, but it's not on any one of our internal monitors. No, it's not, no, no. Did you have any friends at school who played hockey? Uh, we didn't do hockey at my school. We did hockey at my school. Ooh, yeah. super. Sorry, what's that? Well, it was that, making out is that like class envy yeah. again, isn't no, it? No, it's not class but envy. Class but envy. You're always making out that you know I'm yeah. some kind of posh boy, right? No, I'm not. There you are. All I said you're was that you went to a school where they played hockey. All I said was how ridiculous. Uh, no, it's not. All I said was we, they played hockey at my school. That's all I said. Well, yeah, but that's a, that's a sort of jumped up. That's a jumped up sort no, of upper not. middle class game. No, it's not. Yeah, it it's, is. No, I don't. I don't agree. In, fa- in fact, I tell you what. There used to be a huge sort of. Rivalry between the rowers, the footballers, and the hockey players. Oh, the rowers. Yeah, well. the rowers. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> because we the... did rowing, but only for one year. When we had, I told you, we had the guy who was in the 1972 British Olympic team. Oh yeah, that's right. Jim yeah. Clark. Yeah, excellent. Well, loads of people. So you don't care, do you? Well, I was only going to better your story by saying that loads of people who went to my school ended up rowing the Oxford Cambridge boat race, of course, yeah. you know. Well, you in say fact, that. In fact, our headmaster became a fixture in the boat that follows the cruise oh, yeah. because you're entitled to, uh, you know, get on the boat if hey. you've got a boy from your school hey, in the in By the, the way, the is, 16. Is, is it not true, uh, as you were telling me the other day, mm. that the, uh, the head of the sport uh, the sports department at King's School yes. Chester is coming to our show in Liverpool? Yes, he is, yes. And he's a former Everton player. Former Everton player. Right. Uh, got a degree in economics. Mm. And, yes, he's coming to our show in Liverpool, that's right. Amazing. Uh, an Everton legend. Yes. And uh, Donald, who's our promoter, yeah. said, I didn't know Everton had legends, yes. so I sent him a, <laughs> a heated and beefy response. Quite right. You know, naming people like Dixie Dean, Alan yeah. Ball, Joe yes. Royal, you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, Quite right, too. I'll put him straight. Yeah. Um, now, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, yeah, the hockey. So, the hockey boys, What we what, when you're about thir- 12 or 13, yeah. and your mate goes off to play hockey... Then I you, know nothing about hockey, I have to say. Well, my sister played hockey for um, nearly 50 years. Right. Yeah. Really? Yeah, um, yeah unbelievable. Did she not get terribly bad injuries from that? Well, she it's has knee rough, problems. She has knee problems now. But, yeah. uh, but you know, she, she a dedication to her. She started playing when she was about six or yeah. something and played for 
till she was in her 50s, right. you know what I mean? Right. But anyway, uh, point of my story yeah, is... what is the point of your story? ...is that when I was going to play hockey, th- there was... I mean, there was a lot of misunderstanding in those days. I'm talking about my school days now, right? Yeah. 12 or 13. And you then mocked the boys for going off to play a girls game, you yes. see. Because we'd only ever seen girls playing hockey until I got to the King's School right. Chester. I didn't know blokes right. played hockey. Funny enough, when I was a kid, mm. we used to walk yeah. across Hampstead Heath on a Sunday right. after we'd been to church. Yeah. And uh, there was always a hockey game. There was a hockey pitch. Oh, right. Around the back of the Spaniards Inn. Oh, I know. Yeah, I know Ken- where that is. Yeah. Around, around Kenwood. That's what Yeah, area. that's right. Yeah. There were always people Near Boy George's house. Uh, well, his is a bit, yeah, a bit yeah. further down, but that's not right. far. Yeah. And I thought that, mm. I always thought that it was being played by what looked like very posh people. Yes. You know? Really? Yeah, so it didn't seem so to So it is a class thing then, isn't it, with you? Sort of class. No, I don't have a class problem with anything. Yeah. But anyway... But um, I think if your school plays hockey, yeah. it says something about what sort of school it is. It's a brilliant school. No. It's usually an upper, upmarket no. and brilliant school. Upmarket, elitist, yeah. Anyway, anyway, about half of the players in our in our uh, school team, the school hockey team, yeah. always got into the Cheshire County team because, you know, we were a top school, that kind of stuff, you know. Cheshire County. But one time, there was a big chap who played uh, hockey and a big, big guy. I think he was their goalkeeper, actually. Uh-huh. Big fat guy. Did he wear a big mask? Uh, no, no, I didn't wear masks in those days. Really? No. And um, as we were, I remember as we were coming out of the changing rooms one day. You know, I made the jibe about playing a girls' game or something right. because ignorant little boys did in those days. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Not that I was ignorant, but I was like everybody well, else. You know. No. And uh, and you know what he did? He he held his uh, hockey stick at me, right? And it hit me in the back of the head. Mm. And I mean, could have killed me, to be honest. Right. Imagine having a, a hockey stick yeah. uh, hurled well, at me. Well, lucky he wasn't still holding on to it. Well, exactly. And and he, and he chucked it at me in the, the curved bit, you know, bang, hit me on the back of the right. head. And I, I was kind of a bit stunned and all that kind of stuff. I bet you were. Did he leave a mark? I mean, you're not marked forever. For no, that, not really. That. No, it's just a little bump on my head. Mm. But because there was a code by which we all lived, yeah. I refused to identify him and uh, he escaped punishment. Right. So because you were a grass. I wasn't a grass, no. Unlike no, you no. would be now. No, well, yeah, maybe. Now, yeah. how about this? I've got some information mm. from you from the guys behind the glass. The right. World Cup of Hockey yeah. is an ice hockey tournament. Oh. Teams are North America, Europe, Russia, Finland, Sweden, Canada, USA. Well, hang on. It can't be Canada, USA and North America. It must be Canada and USA. Is there an English team in there? Well, there's a European team. Oh, European. Which what? is a bit weird, isn't what? it? What? A Europe team? Yeah. That's the first time I've ever heard of a... Have they never heard of Brexit? We voted to be out of Europe, didn't well, we? Well, not only that, but I mean, <laughs> you know, the whole plan for Europe was a combined European army, yeah. a combined European language, yeah. a combined European economy. Yeah. And if we've now got a... And a currency. And a currency, that's right, yeah. yeah. Which the, well, I mean, we've got a European Ryder Cup team, haven't we? European Ryder I mean, Cup team. will that be affected by Brexit? No, of course not. Why not? Because it's a... It's a, it's a, it's a um, continent rather than a political organisation. It, right? it, not only is it a continent, but it's also a game of uh, voluntary participa- t- participation. Yeah, but so no, you're, not, but, you're not subscribing yeah, but also, people. if we leave the European Union, we're still part of Europe. Yeah, of course I mean, we are. You can't yeah. get away from the no, old no, no, uh, you know, totally geographical agree. continental drift. Totally agree. I mean, the Czech Republic are in it as well. Czech Republic. Yeah. Well, the Czech Republic are in it, yeah. but there's a European team as well. Yes. I thought the Czech Republic was in Europe. Well, Sweden's also got a team, Sweden? and so is Finland. Finland? Yeah. Unbelievable, this. And North America apparently is a separate team from Canada and the USA. How does that work? I've no idea. I, I don't know. It sounds don't. like the maddest tournament of all time. It does sound like we'll the maddest tournament. We'll have to get this guy, yeah. Alan, to explain it to us. Yeah, we'll have, well, yeah. What and on earth and, is going on? And because uh, ice hockey in this country is so limited, I mean, do you know of any it's ice quite, hockey well, teams? Well, actually, yeah, there were a couple in Scotland that were quite popular. Yeah, but I said England, you know. Well, you said this country. We live in Great Britain. Well, I live in England. Yeah, well, it doesn't matter. Mm. The country mm. is Great Britain. Yeah, Your it, passport says you are from Great Britain. Uh, the it doesn't United actually. Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. Exactly, United yeah. Kingdom and well, Northern that's the, Ireland. Well, that's the country. Mm. Yeah, well, I live in England because um, Scots people say they live in Scotland, so I say I live in England. Yeah. It's quite simple. And there's simple. a team in Surrey as well, apparently, the Guildford Flames. Guildford Flames? Why don't you go along and watch it one night? Yeah, go and watch the Guildford Flames <laughs> one night. You know, cool, what are we doing tonight? Well, gone off to see the Flames. Yeah, <laughs> great. Yeah, to a few sherbets first and then a few sat them, you know. Hey, get across the ice, pal. Yeah. <laughs> it's not much of an abusive comment, that, coming from you. Well, I know. Get across is, the ice, pal. I know, but this is family radio, yeah. isn't it? You know yeah, what of mean? course it is, yeah. Mm. Don't shine any lights on yourself. Right? Exactly. Time. Exactly. Uh, this is talk sport. And if you're not afraid to open your eyes, you may be pleasantly surprised. Things are never as bad as they seem. Just gotta learn to see. Forest for the trees. Forest for the trees. Sounds like Huey Lewis in the news to me. It does, yeah. I agree. It's about trees. Trees, yeah. 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 Is that a song? 
I don't know. Okay. I've never heard that song before, but it does sound like Huey Lewis. Forest for the Trees. Forest right. for the Trees, that's great. There you go. Good. Now, we're going to speak to Richard Carbon, Excellent. professor in entomology, mm. University of California, Davis, uh, author of a book called Plant Sensing and Communication. Mm. Uh, let's find out what he's got to say for himself. Uh, professor Carbon, a very good uh, morning to you. Uh, good evening to you as well. Thank you, Thank very, you very much. much. Now, my my my, uh, my co-host here, Mr. Parry, uh, has said for years and years and years that, that not only do the trees talk to him, but that they also communicate with each other. Uh, and he's been roundly ridiculed for it. And he's delighted to see that there are other people now in the academic community uh, who would appear to back up much of what he said. Yes, um, I, I think that uh, I, too, um, have been um, uh, have had a tough go of it. Um, but that um, I think the evidence has accumulated, and now the the rest of the scientific community is pretty much on board with the idea that plants are remarkably sensitive, and um, that they also communicate with one another. Mm. Okay. Now, in in which way do they do that, Professor? I mean. Uh, you know, th- there are many, many forms of communication in the world between animals, humans, and now plants. How do they actually communicate? The kind of communication that I study primarily is um, the release of um, airborne chemicals when they're damaged by insects. When when uh, right. a leaf gets a bite out of it, it produces a whole bouquet of, of these chemicals, And its neighbors, as well as other branches on that same plant, are able to perceive these chemicals and then kind of gear up their own defenses in response. So this is one kind of communication, but Mm. they, they can do a lot of other things. They have a lot of different tricks, a lot of different, um, sort of senses, if Mm. you will, much Mm. as we do. Okay. Is there any more direct communication between trees? Because the roots of a tree go down incredibly deep into the earth, don't they, into the, the ground, and that's why they're sometimes so hard to, to shift in deforestation and all that kind of stuff. But do they actually, do roots connect with each other below the, way below the surface? Is that another form of commun- a connection between different trees? It is indeed. So not only do the roots connect with No them, way. I don't believe that. I don't with- believe it. I'm sorry, the professor's explaining, so can you shut up? All right. Sorry, professor, please go on. That's okay. It's it's good to be skeptical. Yeah. It, it's, 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 yeah. If, if, if we didn't have mics out there who were being skeptical, then we would just, uh, you know, kind of believe sure. anything hook, line, and sinker. Yeah, exactly. Sure. We could elect crazy politicians and things like that. Heaven, heaven forbid that there. could happen. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. so... so the, well, let me answer yeah. then. Yeah, the roots communication, well, so please. what you're saying, uh, if, you, so, if, if, if I may paraphrase... Uh, uh, Professor yep. Carbon, is that, say, for example, if you had one of those tiny cameras, the like of which you would, say, put inside somebody to check for diseases and whatever, if you put a, a, a camera, if you could, along the, 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 the route as it goes underground, that somehow it would come up connected to another tree on the other side of the world, which is what Mr. Parry's been telling me. Well, I don't know about the other side of the world, but what people have done is they have used... Um, tracers, radioactive tracers, mm-hmm. so they, they can label uh, chemicals, and they can inject those chemicals into um, one tree, and then um, they find uh, those chemicals moving through the roots and appearing in, um, in, in neighboring trees. That's amazing. Now, yeah, now some of this mm. is because of connections between the roots themselves. Mm. But the roots are also surrounded by uh, fungi, by the, the, the little threads of the mushrooms that we see in the forest. Mm-hmm. And those um, fungal connections are responsible both for a lot of this um, underground uh, transfer that's mm-hmm. going on, and, and also... Um, we're used to thinking of roots as being the the organs that plants use to acquire water and nutrients. Well, in fact, roots are pretty terrible at that job. Mm. And luckily, they can attach themselves to these um, these fungal threads, and the the fungal threads are much better at doing it, mm. as now- well as exchanging these uh, chemicals that provide information and. Mm-hmm. 
uh, all of this. Okay. Now, what is the point of all of this communication? Because according to uh, another expert um, in, in woodland activity, Peter Wallaben, who I'm sure you're familiar with, um, <laughs> he says that these trees are capable of warning each other, uh, of recognising yep. family members. I mean, yep. that's uh, surely that's a bit fanciful, isn't it? Um, I guess I would not uh, say that, that the trees are necessarily warning one another, but I would say that um, the trees are extremely sensitive to what's going on around them. Yeah. So rather than thinking about um, uh, trees as, as sort of uh, giving their neighbors all this good information, which may occur, mm. but, but I think that's a little bit harder to get your head around. Mm. What's easier to get your head around is the idea that trees are just very sensitive. It matters to them just like it matters to animals. Mm what is happening around them. And so they are able to perceive um, cues that their neighbors are happening to, uh, to release or to emit when their neighbor is damaged by yeah. insects or their neighbor is damaged by a disease. Yeah. Um, they are um, responding to whatever information they can gather. Yeah, I see. Uh, uh, indeed. Now, Professor, the other thing is, I believe, in a way, trees communicate with human beings because where I live, I have a balcony which I can sit on. I can um, see out over uh, a collection of trees. It's like a copse. It's not a wood. But when the winds are blowing and those trees are swaying in the breeze... I do believe that in some way they're giving out messages, you know, whether it be about the sort of weather that we're, we're um, encountering or whether they, there is well, do you, some... Do you detect them moving in different ways depending on the weather? Well, yeah, of course you do, because it depends on how the wind blows. But do you understand what I mean, Professor? I believe that in some way that gives me comfort. I, I think those trees are very much alive. They're swaying in the wind. They, they are in some way communicating with me. Fair enough. I don't know that they are um, intending to communicate with you, mm. but I would certainly agree that there's information there. I mean, the fact that they're swaying in the breeze, yep. um, you know, lets you know you don't have to open your balcony door to get a sense of how windy it is. Well, there's a so roof there's garden, anyway. information there. It is. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I, I agree. Whether or not, yeah, so it's unclear if, if mm. their intention is to communicate that information with you, and and. Honestly, I, I don't see why they would want to, yeah. but um, uh, there is information there, and there's Indeed. also, you know, 10 years ago, a lot of um, what we now have pretty good evidence to be the case yeah. uh, would have seemed really fanciful, so that's why uh, doing science is exciting. Yeah, sure. no, no, I, I mean, well, I mean totally if, agree. if trees do do what you're su suggesting they do, I mean, you've referred to, or somebody's referred to something called... What, are you still saying they don't? Well, I don't... I mean, I'm this is convinced. a professor. This man yeah, knows right. what he's talking about. Yeah, I know that. You're but, casting, you know, well, doubt on everything well, he says. Well, why don't you let me ask the question, yeah, and then on, you then. can uh, decide whether or not it's a valid question. Yeah. Pardon my uh, rude, the rudeness of my co-host here, uh, Professor Carbon. It's mm. very difficult. I have to put up with this all the time. The Wood Wide Web, as it's referred to... Um, has would have us believe that basically trees are somehow communicating. But it's not doing them any good, is it? Because, I mean, say, for example, you're in the Amazon um, and you're a tree uh, that's being you know, laid to waste by some massive bulldozer. Mm. Um, you know, it's not actually stopping the tree down the road uh, or, or helping the tree down the road to stop, stop it from happening to, to, to it, if you know what I mean. Yeah, so this communication... Um has certain limitations, just like communication that uh, we might have. So if, if a bulldozer is just about to come through your radio studio, yeah. um, one of you telling the other one uh, a bulldozer's coming is not going to stop the bulldozer. However, that communication... Yeah, but one of us could get... But we could get out of the way, though. That's true, and, and trees have a much harder time getting out of the way. Yes. But, but the communication um, is could be uh, really beneficial to the trees if they are able to uh, get an early warning about things like an insect is about to attack them, a disease is about to uh, come through, or even they're about to be shaded. Well, what can and they do now, about, well, what can a tree do about an insect in sort of uh, invasion? Uh, trees have um, immune-like responses, mm -hmm. much like we do, 
And so in response to um, insects, they can gear up these defenses. So some of these defenses are uh, physical. They, they have um, sort of hard, uh, waxy outer surfaces, and they can uh, harden or produce uh, more of these waxes. Um, some of the defenses are chemical, and so they can produce more of these chemicals in anticipation, if you will, of an impending insect attack. Mm -hmm. Fine. So what the few mean, fine. Sorry. Fine. No, 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 no. This I, I like these theories being explained to me in yeah. such graphic terms. Really? It, it, it's absolutely. Excellent. No, you only like it because you think it's proving some point that you want to make. Well, I've been, t I've been, I have uh, been banging the drum about trees communicating with each other for years, Professor. I really have. I mean, for instance, in 1987, we had a terrible hurricane in this country, it wiped out thousands of trees. Now that in itself would be a very painful experience for the tree community, wouldn't it, to have that amount of, uh, of trees laid bare and, 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 you know, it took months, if not years, to clear them all up. I mean... They... Seven Oaks became one oak, I think. Seven it? Oaks became one oak. So it, that really will have devastated the tree community, won't it? Yes, I would agree with that. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's what I mean. And, and, oh, and so what's your point? Well, look, my point is, 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 is that it's like countries go to war mm. and they lose lots of people yeah. because this is what happens. Yeah. Trees, as a community, suffer the same sort of, you know, yeah, um, but, but terrifying nothing, losses. But, but nothing changes. That's my point. I don't see how it works. That doesn't, what? There doesn't seem to be any point in a lot of the communication. Uh, Professor, perhaps you could tell us about the desire of a tree to repair itself. If there was a hurricane, it wipes out loads of trees. These trees are very resilient, aren't they? The, the, you know, the fresh buds uh, which can grow from the wreckage of a tree are apparent to us all. Yeah, and I think that, um, that, that some of these things... Um, so so um, one of you, I think, is making the point that, ah, yeah, that all this communication actually is not going to stop the hurricane, stop the bulldozer. Right, yeah. um, some of this information, though, um, really can make a big difference. Yes. So that if uh, trees are about to be shaded... Um, they can become aware of this, and um, they can grow either um, more rapidly mm. up so that they don't get shaded, yep. or they can grow away. They can put their resources into branches, into shoots that allow them to grow away from the direction at w from which the but shade But don't they just grow naturally from. towards the light anyway? I'm sorry, towards the... The light. Uh, yeah, but so they do that anyway. Uh, that, that's certainly, yeah, that that is certainly true. I mean, um, they will grow towards the light, but they will, um, if you um, shade them, or you don't even need to shade them. They can sense the quality of the light that uh, is cast by um, another green neighbor, as opposed to um, an inanimate object, a wall, or something like mm -hmm. that. And, and they respond much more strongly to a, another neighbor, and they can grow away from that neighbor um, so that they can maintain themselves in an environment where they're getting more light. Okay. Sure, sure. Well, it's all fascinating yep. stuff, I have to say. Absolutely fascinating. Very Thank you very much indeed. Uh, Professor Richard Carbon, mm -hmm. Professor of Entomology, University of California, Davis. I'm still not quite convinced, mm. uh, but we will talk well, about I am. this a little bit more. Well, you are, because yep. uh, you think it proves some kind of point that you made years and years ago, yes. uh, which is the only reason you're in support of it. Indeed. But, uh, you know, as he just said, mm. it's all very well saying that you know, trees grow mm. Uh, mm. because they've been told mm. that they're going to be put into shade. Actually, no, they grow into the light because that's how they grow. Yeah. They grow to the light anyway. Yeah. Uh, Abdul says this, Porky can't wait for the professor to finish so he can rip into us all about how he is right. Yes. I'm with MG. This is ridiculous. No, it's not ridiculous. It's now proven that my theory from years ago, before mm. I knew any of this, um, you know, this uh, technical data existed, I was convinced that trees communicate and now I've been proven right. Well, we Why can't say. you just accept that? Well, I, it's not a question of me whether I accept it. It's a question of whether the listeners accept it. We shall find out from them when they tweet us. Crazy. Uh, coming up next. But that's how it goes. Millions of people living as hobos. Yeah, yeah, but maybe. This is Talk Sport. We are the two mics. Listography coming up in the next hour. We'll, uh, we'll choose a subject very soon uh, for that. Also, we're going to have to look back as well on our predictions. Mm. 
for the uh, football last weekend. Uh, because if you might remember, on Friday morning, we did a little sort of predictor of our own. And this will be something we do yes, from now on. Yes, so yes, We'll do it on Friday and see how we got on. We yes. Haven't, I haven't totted it up yet, but we'll see how we both did. Yeah. Uh, Pascal says this at the two mics. If mm. I was a tree, I'd grab at the chance to communicate with Porky. Yeah. Who else would give me such entertainment on a daily basis? Well, I mean, look, you know, it's not entertainment necessarily. It's uh, it's information, mm. you know? Uh, Roy says this. Porky yeah. must be interested in this. He hasn't asked the prof why he doesn't do something useful like finding a cure for cancer. Well, exactly, because I think, I think exploring the communication process between trees is just as vital. Mm. Well, not as vital is fine, a cure for cancer, obviously, no. but, but it's st- still a vital part of research. Exactly right. Uh, Nico says, I must admit, that was very educational, chaps. Well done. I just wish old Porky would stop interrupting the prof every two seconds. That's well, I true. didn't. Well, you I did. didn't. No, I didn't. I let him talk at length. Mm, he didn't agree with you about the trees talking to you either, did he? Let's what? face it. Let's break down the interview and say that he said that the trees communicate with each other. Mm. He did not say that they're communicating with you. He said they communicate. They're sending out information uh-huh. when they're swaying in the breeze. They're sending out information. Well, he said they now, might be. No, no, he said they are because then you know the strength of the of the wind in the air right. and all that kind of stuff. I but see. he also, you were aghast when I said, "Do you think that trees communicate through their roots?" And you looked at me with that whimsical look yeah. about, "Oh, you know, the re- uh, prof's going to tell you you're a you not." You think I've got a whimsical look? Well, some, some, yeah, that's sort of weird look, I suppose, not whimsical. <laughs> and then what did the, ref say, the prof say? The what? prof said, yes, they definitely do. Yeah, but he said I mean, this is a theory I've been expounding for decades. Yeah, but, but not decades. I mean, decades. Fu- fungi is what communicate, what the communication system seems to be mostly made of. No, though, no, no. Which but, is what one of our earlier tweets said. No. It's not actually the root. It's the fungi on the root. No, didn't you hear what he said? When they inject trees with chemicals, they find that the, the chemicals move down through the roots of the tree mm. and end up in other trees. Yeah. And that can only be done by the interconnection of the roots of trees one, in the right? same ground. This sounds a bit threatening, this one from yeah. Marco. He says, mushrooms can create their own microclimate, summoning a wind to carry spores. Don't underestimate plants and trees. Well, there you go, you see. Marco's... That, sounds, that sounds like a bit of a threat. No, he's picked up on it. Well, well he's like saying they're going to be consumed by trees. Well, he was saying, saying yeah. that spores could be sent by mushrooms to kill us. Well, I don't or think so. Or attack us. It... like something out of poison ivy. Yeah, and, and Alan here trying to pour water on it. It's no good, Alan. No good trying to pour cold water on it, mate. It's proven. He says it isn't proven. It's still predominantly a theory, not yes. fully backed up about the communication that's true. between trees. But that's like saying, you know, oh, um... Uh, aliens. Aliens is just a theory. Well, aliens is just a theory well, because we, no, nobody's ever seen one, right? Yeah. So that's why aliens well, are a theory. people say they've seen them, but they can't actually yeah. convince anybody well, else. Well, there's never been a picture of one, has there? Well, there has, but, but nobody can ever show the picture yeah. to, in its entirety. That's you know right. I mean? Whereas we know that trees exist, and we now know they communicate with each other. So it's not just a theory anymore. It is a proven fact, and I wish you'd get your head around that, OK? All right. How yeah. about this one from David? Dr. Carbon. Mm. Isn't carbon uh, what's left after a tree is burnt down? What? Good point, Say that it? again. Isn't carbon what's left after a tree is burnt yes, down? Yes, that's right, yeah. Is it find that, un, un, don't you find that uh, sort of a coincidence? Why? Well, because that's the professor's name. Oh, carbon. Like carbon. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, carbon. No, I don't find the coincidence because no. his name is spelled K-A-R-B-A-N and carbon is C-A-R-B-O-N. Yeah, but it's pronounced and, the same. Yeah, it's, it's pronounced the same. But, you know, that's another thing, you see. Carbon means life, doesn't it? Carbon is a life giver, isn't it? Is it? Yeah, it is, yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah it is. Uh, how about this from uh, uh, Matt, who says, mm. Trees that talk, has Porky been watching Lord of the Rings again? Yeah, yeah, well, I haven't, actually. And funny enough, funny enough, the guy who wrote the book, which turned into Game of Thrones... Mm. He's 66 today. Oh, is he? I noticed, yeah. All right. His name's R.R. something, isn't it? That's right. We've talked about him in the past. Yeah, we have, yeah. He's uh, he's, he's a bit behind because he's supposed to be writing a new series, isn't he? Is he? I don't know. I think he is, yeah. Anyway, Emma here, who's a regular uh, correspondent, she says, Porky says, I think she's quoting me here, "Uh, I feel they are waving and communicating with me. And Professor uh, said, OK, I don't know why they'd want to. That's uh, that's a bit harsh. It's a bit harsh. Seems yeah. as the professor doesn't know me. Yeah. So Emma's trying to make out that the professor was putting me down, yeah. saying, "Why would trees want to communicate with you?" Well, he did you? suggest that, didn't he? No. What he meant was, he said, "I will have to research as to why trees would want to communicate yeah. with human beings." That's yes. what he's saying. Yeah. Well, he's not saying me in particular. He's basically saying he's talking cobblers. Yeah. And Robbie here, you know, another mocking aside. Mum, mum, that strange man's talking to the trees again. <laughs> trying to make out that I'm some sort of a half baked. But yes. I'm not. I've come up with a theory which has been vindicated by one of the top tree experts in the world. By the way, that guy, Alan, that was uh, tweeting us earlier about the, the, uh, the National uh, the world, world Cup of Hockey, right? Yes. Uh, he said, in, in, in answer to why mm. uh, Canada, the USA, and North America have got teams in it, yeah, go he on. said it doesn't make any sense to him either. No. And, and he, he's a fan. And, he, and where he's, does he live? He's watching it in North Carolina somewhere. Unbelievable, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, Rye says this. Yeah. Hey, Mike, it's 
that Professor Carbon? Does he teach at Nottingham University? Well, sorry, Nottingham University, same place Porky went. Uh, I went to the University of the Trent, actually. Uh, Nottingham Poly. Uh, 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 Nottingham Poly, yeah. It's Brian Epstein's birthday today as well. Is it? Yeah. He's not alive anymore. No, he's not alive anymore. It's not really his birthday. Do you know he was only 33 when he died? Was it? It was a terrible tragedy. He killed himself, didn't he? Uh, well, yes, I think that was the general verdict, yeah. although it was, you know, said it might have been an overdose, accidental overdose of pills or something yeah. like that. What happened was, uh, he had a party. I thought we weren't supposed to be talking about the Beatles. No, we're so. not, we're not going to. But well, this he is was the Beatles good. manager. Yeah, yeah, and do you know what happened? So how can we not be talking about the Beatles? Well, because it's quite fascinating. <laughs> it's quite fascinating. What happened was... Why are we talking about my, uh, my photographer friend and your photographer friend? We haven't talked about No, that we're yet. going to talk about him in a second. Right. But what, what happened was... Um, Brian Epstein actually discovered the Beatles, but wasn't a very good um, businessman. Yeah. And he lost them, like, hundreds of millions of pounds, really, in, in, in deals over the years for licensing and all that. You know, people ripping them off in America and all that. And uh, a famous quote from Paul McCartney was, uh, you know, uh, Brian said, well, all right, I'm, I'm not that good at business, lads, but don't worry, I take a lot of advice off my father. Right. And Paul McCartney said, and his father... Ran a furniture shop in Liverpool. Right. So, I mean, you know, he's kind of summed it all up. So was you know? he a Liverpudlian Epstein? Yes, he was. I didn't yeah. know that. Lived in a, he worked in a furniture shop around the corner I from... he was from London. I don't know why. No, 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 no. No, well, he, he rebased to London very yeah. quickly. He bought property in Baker Street and yeah. all that, and he, he, he did very well in investments in property. But he... Um, he worked in a furniture store, which was literally just around the corner from Matthew Street, where the cavern was, uh-huh. and everybody kept coming in, you know, at lunch times and saying this great new group had turned up. And he, he, I think, I think they sold like uh, musical sheets or something like that in what? his uh, in his shop. Musical sheets, yeah, you know, what, for a bed. No, 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 no. You know, sheets of paper which you write music. music on and all that kind you mean of stuff. Sheet music, sheet music. That's yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Well done. Yeah, musical sheets is something else. That's right. Yeah, sheets that play music. Oh, is it? Under, oh, okay. When you yeah. get underneath them, and uh, and anyway, uh, he went round and had a look, and the rest is history. But anyway, we weren't talking about that. No. So uh, let's not talk about the Beatles. No, no, no. Of course not. No. Mm. Um, right. Uh, another one here. Uh, Mick says, uh, "Welcome back to Nights in the States." He's a listener on the other side of the Atlantic. We uh-huh. do have a lot of listeners over there. By we the way, we do. Very pleased. Well, that, all around uh, you the world. Guys are, uh, yeah, all around the world, definitely. Australia. And, What's uh, amazing, actually, is the numbers of people that download the podcast. Even, I mean, some of them listen yes. to the show, some yeah. of them download the podcast. I know. But those podcast numbers are growing massively. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Mm. It says here, Porky spouting his usual drivel, please don't ever change. Yes. Well, you see, that's a bit of a backhanded compliment, that, because, you know, to, to what you describe drivel, I describe as innovation, uh-huh. as, um, as uh, enlightenment. Yes. And on many, many occasions as fulfilment. Okay. Mm. Now, what about this from a Matty who says, Lads, yeah. when will you be bringing back winners and losers? I hope it's soon, as I miss Porky moaning about losing. I don't think we're going to do winners and losers this season, are we? Mm. I mean, well, if there's a big public demand, we have to meet the wishes of our uh, well, if audience. There is. But, you know, I think for everyone who'd like to mm. bring it back, there are others who don't particularly want to bring it back. We do, uh, we yes. do uh, Heroes and Villains when yes. we do a weekend show, when we yes. do a Sunday show. So we'll see. I mean, we know, I don't know. I mean, I, I, you know, you, you, I mean, we did four about four different versions of it last year. Yes. And, you know, each time I won it. So it's a kind of a bit one-sided. Well, I don't think that's true. I think that it was all gerrymandered, which is a, you know, a word I use quite a lot. But, I mean, in that case, it is particularly relevant. Exactly. Yeah. We've got to stop. We're out of time. Talk. This is Talk Sport. We are the two mics. We'll also be having a look back at some of our predictions from last week to see who uh, came better, uh, best at yes. the top of the predictor tables, yes. uh, even though there isn't a, t- a predictor uh, league mm. this year. Mm. Now, let me ask you a question. Have you ever heard of a magazine called Lilliput? Lilliput, no. Lilliput magazine. Is this about small people? Uh, it's not about small people, right. no. Uh, it's nothing to do with Gulliver's Travels. It was a, 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 it was a small t- format British monthly magazine of humour, short stories, photographed and the arts right founded in 1937 1937 yeah who by uh it was founded uh i doesn't i don't know who founded okay. it actually okay. but it was once edited right yes by a guy called jack hargreaves jack hargreaves in the 50s you remember yeah. him yeah i remember him how oh, oh. which was a great show by the yeah, way it was, i used yeah. to watch it all the time i did because they they used to show all these inventions yeah. and things and yeah. he used to talk about how things work that's right which yeah. was fascinating right yes it was but yeah. what's interesting right is that one of our listeners lucy has tweeted earlier on uh, something that she thought would appeal to you, mm. and it's from an, it's an advert basically from yes. the fifties. Yes. Do you mind if I show it to you? No, please do. I'd like you to read it out because right, it's look. all about bladderation mm. okay. and sailing. Really? Right? And yeah, now, if yeah. you can read that, yeah. basically, it's okay. all about uh, two guys talking to each other in an advert for Rose's lime juice. Right. Okay. So what do you make of that? Right. I'll read a bit of it read, to you. Read it out in yeah. your best sort of uh, Gosport sailing club. That's accent. right. Roll up the ocean, William. I shall not be needing it for several days, but you came here for the sailing. 
I did. But last night I was exposed to the hospitality of the local yachtsman. Today the motion of the earth is more than enough. You sound strangely like a man who forgot his roses. I know. You're going to remind me that if I'd drunk roses lime juice last night, I should be in rude health this morning. Exactly. A gin and lime, or more straight drink, roses brings a man safely through the heaviest weather. Sounds like a milestone of progress. Let's have a large gin and roses now. I feel my sea legs returning already. And at the bottom it says, Roses for gin and lime. Isn't that bizarre? It is. Isn't I mean, that... I mean to advertise, you know, listen, take strong drink because yeah. it's good for you, yeah. is, is uh, so in your well, face. Well, it's like those ridiculous cigarette ads that you yeah. have. Yeah, You know, it? this cigarette is for men. And, you know, this cigarette, you know, the you macho smoke this, man. Yeah, and if you smoke this, you'll turn into a real man. Yeah, yeah, kind of stuff. yeah. If you it's smoke amazing, this, you can gallop on a yeah. horse across Arizona. Yeah, yeah that's right. Now, yeah. the other thing that's interesting, right, mm. uh, is that in August 1960, yeah. uh, the magazine became absorbed into men only. Right. Which wasn't actually at the time a pornographic magazine. Wasn't it? I didn't realise that. No, it was, I mean... Soft format. I mean, apparently Lilliput was famous for having pictures of sort of scantily clad women. Oh, yeah. But they're very arty. And like health about... and efficiency. Well, no. Remember that? Was, that? No, that was a nudist magazine. That was a nudist magazine, Which every 14-year-old boy has seen right. a copy yeah. of. Exactly, yeah. Well, I used to see it in doctor's uh, surgery sometimes. No, you? he didn't, did you? Yeah, I think so. Really? I'm pretty sure that's where I saw it first. Well, did it pretend to be well, a health and efficiency? Maybe that was National Geographic. I think it was, yeah. I don't think it pretended to be a health and efficiency magazine. No, I seem to remember looking at pictures of naked women in the National Geographic as well. Oh, really? But I think they were more kind of, you know, exploratory stories about tribes of various weird people parts of the world. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. I don't know about that. Listen, I've been sent more information about trees, Have which you? is absolutely fascinating, well, who right? By? What, by trees themselves? Well, no, just by uh, interested people. Uh, now, a not si- somebody called Treza. Uh No, not somebody called Treza, no. Uh, they, they're currently, the search is on, I didn't realise this, for the tree of the year. Tree of the year? Tree of the year. How do you get a tree of the year? Well, it's a tree of the year competition. <laughs> yeah, honestly, yeah. Well, where do they go? Well, I'm just about well, to tell the you. Hall. And, and, and this is sponsored by the Woodland Trust. Of course. Of which I am a member. Oh, really? I joined the Woodland Trust you about two years that. ago. Why? Well, I'd forgotten, actually, because I just filled in the form and sent them a cheque and all that. And I get sort of regular newsletters, you know. Well, what sort of newsletters do they have in the Woodland Trust? You oh, know, great you... news. Another tree has sprouted in uh, Suffolk. Yes, uh, uh, planting um, operations really? and all this kind of stuff, Replenishment of trees, uh, you know, care for trees, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. By the way, by the way, uh, you know when we do uh, Porky Vision this week, yes, there's there's a program which I've uh, seen, but I haven't seen all of it yet, about the amount of fly tipping going on in this country at the moment. Yeah. It is truly horrendous. Well, it is partly, as we've said before many times, yeah, yeah. because of the policies it of is. the council, isn't it? It is. It, it's happening everywhere. And I thought that I was plagued in my neighbourhood, in Stockbroker Belt, right. by a bit of it happening, which is usually people who clear out um, uh, flats, but then yes, don't... but have, then can't find anywhere to dump the exa- stuff. Exactly, and all this kind of stuff. Right. But, but, I mean, what I saw in this programme was ten times worse. No. It, I mean, the whole lorries come along and dump stuff in people's gardens really? and all sorts of things. Yeah, I'll tell you what, I was very disturbed mm. today because I was mm. walking the dog not far from the house yes. down in Sussex, and there's a beautiful field that we tend to go right. through, yep. and it was full of rubbish. But like, it'd be almost like a, a, somebody just emptied out a, yeah, a, right. a, a black plastic bin liner. This is what they do. This but this was nowhere near a road route. No, no, no. This is what they do. and just throw it over a hedge and all sorts of things. Yeah. But anyway, getting back to the tree of the year, a sycamore which starred in Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, the original... <laughs> Bram- yeah, yeah. You've got an agent. Well, I, I, I'm going to read it to you. Um, the original Bramley apple tree, right. from which all other Bramley apple trees have sprouted over the last few hundred years, what, right? I mean, the very first Bramley apple tree. Yes, that's right. Yes, yes. Really? Absolutely, yeah. Right. And a tree uh, that swallowed a bicycle are among those shortlisted what? for Tree of the Year. Have you ever seen the picture of the tree that swallowed a bicycle? No. There's a guy who had a junkyard, you know, mm. down in Essex or somewhere like right. that. And it was abandoned, and uh, the trees had started growing through the wall and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And over a period of years, a bike suddenly ended up, you know, five feet up this tree. What do you mean? Well, the, the tree had somehow well, enveloped, enveloped the it. bike. Yes, that's right, yeah. Well, and the bike had been left up against the tree. Yes, that's right. That's absolutely right. What, did he take it in, like, a, a tyre first or handlebars first? No, the, the, the bar, the crossbar first, yeah. uh, sort of slipped into the tree. Really? And, yeah, and that, I've and never then, seen that. Yeah, yeah, I've seen it, yeah. I've I mean, seen it, yeah. Where yeah. is that, then? In Essex? Uh, I thought it was Essex, but I'll find out. I've never seen it. Here, let me tell you this. Now, now shortlist uh, of Tree of the Year features 28 of the UK's finest trees, and... Um, They've had more than 200 nominations from people who either got a tree or or, or have nominated a tree in yeah. their area, right? Do they have to take a picture of a tree and send it in? 
Presumably. Yes, you do, yes. Yeah. And, and a bit of a history of the tree. Uh, a winner for each country will be selected. Uh, this is England, Wales, Scotland and Northern Ireland, OK? Uh, by a public vote, and they will go on to compete in the European Tree of the Year contest. That's ridiculous. No, it's not. Why would you want it's a Tree great. of the Year competition? Well, because you do, because trees yeah, are, I mean, are great. Everything, I mean, it's like everything now is a day. I mean, yeah. like yesterday, talk like a pirate day. You know, today will be some other kind of day yeah. to celebrate chocolate biscuits or something. Do you see and that... there's ridiculous award ceremonies all the time. Do you see my pirate name would have been Plank? Yes, <laughs> Did you see funnily that? enough, yeah. I mean, that's, uh, that's pretty good, Mine was it? Mama, bizarrely. M- Mama, was it? Okay. Yeah. Right, now that... not even the right gender. Here are other shortlisted trees in England include the mulberry bush yeah. and a present in Yorkshire. Is that technically a bush? Yes, mulberry bushes. Well, how can it not go into a bush of the well, year? Well, it's tree of the year. Um, a mul- <laughs> no, 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 no. A mulberry bush is a tree. Well, why is it called a bush, then? Well, I don't know, but it is a tree, honestly. Don't worry. A mulberry bush is a tree. Listen, when was the last time... What about a holly bush? Is that a tree? Uh, uh, holly bush is a tree, definitely, holly, yeah. Holly grows on trees, but it also grows in bushes. Yeah, well, it, uh, it's uh, more of a tree. Is I it? mean, for instance, when did you last buy a car phone in a car phone warehouse shop? I've never bought a car phone in a car it, phone exactly. warehouse Exactly, and nobody's any, uh, neither's anybody else for the last 20 years, but it's called car phone warehouse, Well, that's warehouse, not the same right? as trees and bushes, sure. Well, I think it is. Anyway, listen. Go on. Um, now, that is thought to have been the origin of the nursery rhyme, here we go round the mulberry bush. Here we go round the mulberry tree. It doesn't have the same ring to no, it. No, it doesn't. It no. wouldn't rhyme either. No, played by female prisoners with their children, where they all died of disease in those days. You know wasn't what I mean? Wasn't it something to do with... No, that was Ring of Ring of Rosie, wasn't yeah. it? Here we it was go about round the plague. The... No, oh, the that's... plague was the Ring of Ring of Rosie. That's right, that's it? right, yeah, yeah. Here we go round the mulberry bush, the mulberry bush, the mulberry bush. Yeah. Here we go round the mulberry yeah. bush... All fall down, no, or whatever. No, that no? was Ring a Ring of Roses. Oh, was it? Okay, yeah, well, never mind. Uh, anyway, so <laughs> so let's go on. There are also rare... There's nothing like it. Hang on, hang on. There are also rare elms, right? Yeah. The famous tree on Robert Hadrian's elms, Wall. Hey? Hey? Robert Elms? No, th- no, rare elms. Oh, rare, rare elm elms. trees, because they're the oldest trees yeah. in the country. Well, they all died, I thought, with Dutch elm disease. Well, no, some of them still survive. Yeah. Uh, the famous tree on Hadrian's Wall, which featured in Kevin Costner's 1991 film, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. Why were they filming at Hadrian's Wall? Well, they, that's where they did it, didn't they? You well, know? He's meant to be in Sherwood Forest, isn't he? No, don't you remember when he escaped from Jerusalem? He had to make his way back across Europe, and I think that was used oh, really? as a, as a, a, I don't remember like that a well. panoramic shot. Right. right it also panoramic, says certainly. it also says uh, and the dying Bramley apple tree yeah. from which all other Bramley trees come. Right. Okay. Now this well, if is it's dying. Then not, there's not be any more Bramley apple trees then. Well, there are, because now the, the seeds come from all the successive Bramley trees which have sprouted from the original oh, one, right. you see what I mean? Do you know, I found an apple tree in my garden this year. You found one? Yeah. Did which you I know never, it was there? No, well, because I don't think it's ever borne fruit before. No. Oh. Isn't that weird? Yeah, it is a bit weird, that. Yeah. yeah. And, and they're mean, beautiful apples. They look like those, um, what do you call those ones that are red, uh, not... Not pink red ladies. Delicious. Pink ladies, pink yeah. Pink ladies, like yeah. Pink ladies. Well, make sure they're not um, poisonous crab apples. No, they're not. Because they could poison your children. No, no, we've already eaten them. Oh, you've eaten they're them? really good. OK, yeah. yeah. Right, now then, this is the interesting time, one like. for me, and you'll be interested in this because you're yeah. Scottish. Scotland's shortlist includes the last remaining tree from the ancient Burnham Oakwood. Burnham Oakwood. Hmm. Now, what's, what's famous about that? Uh, is it from Macbeth? It is from Macbeth. It is, isn't it? Um, Macbeth When the trees shall... move. No, no. Macbeth shall not be beaten mm. until Burnham Wood to him That's doth right. come. Yes. And what happened That's was... That's what I'm saying. They walk. No, they're moving trees. Well, what happened was the soldiers who were attacking Macbeth, they cut all the saplings off the trees and put them in their uniforms as cover for advancing up the hill. Oh, right. So Burnham Wood was, in fact, moving up yes. the hill towards uh, towards Macbeth. It was in the stage show that I saw yeah. with Glenda Jackson and, yes. and uh, Christopher Plummer on yes. Broadway. They, br- they did that brilliantly. Right, they okay. made, it was almost like the witches had made the trees that's all right. move around. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Mm. And the other two um, prophecies were Macbeth shall not be beaten by any man of woman born, Yeah, and that's because the guy who did beat him, Macduff, was in fact born by cesarean birth. Right. Okay. Uh-huh. And the third one was something to do with the weather, wasn't it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, Burnham Wood till Dunsinane Hill doth come. Yes. Yeah, Macbeth will not be beaten till Burnham Wood mm. to Dunsinane Hill doth come. Yeah. And of course, they started moving up the hill. Yeah. The then uh, it's no like man the of South Bank show this today. Isn't yeah, it? yeah. No man of woman born shall uh, defeat Macbeth. Have you seen the time? Yeah. Hang on. So he thought he was in good shape there, yeah. and uh, and then what was the, th- what was the third? I one? don't know. What was the third? I'm going to find the third one. Yeah, all right, find the third uh, one. Anyway, it says, Ancient Burnham Oakwood, whose yeah. advance, uh, it is foretold, will vanquish Macbeth in Shakespeare's play. Yeah. 
and a sycamore, which has eaten various objects, including a bicycle, after growing through the scrap of a blacksmith's workshop. See, told you Incredible. about that. Absolutely incredible. It's I don't know where you find this stuff. Yeah, well, uh, now, coming up, yeah. though, we're going to talk about uh, what we should do for nystography. Bit of and a tree also, special, this And also, uh, we're going to have really. a look at the football uh, scenario from okay. the weekend. Okay. This is Talk Sport. Okay. Talk sport, we are the two mics. This is coming up. We're going to pick one very, very shortly. Uh, got lots of great suggestions. I'll just run through some of them for you, Paul, mm-hmm. shall I? Uh, before we have uh, the re- revelation of the uh, football results of the weekend. Kevin says this. How about your three favourite moments from the two mics? Mm-hmm. Uh, E.g., uh, the do it in, they do it in wooden rooms, yeah. uh, which, of course, was the pigeon conversation. Yes. Uh, Ross, uh, who's been obviously paying attention, says three most interesting conversations you've had with a tree, mm-hmm. uh, which might not work terribly well. No. Spider suggesting three things. WWE wrestling. Rap music, Great mm. British Bake Off. I'm not quite sure uh, what he means by that. Really. No. Uh, Toon Soldier, three supernatural or paranormal phenomenon that you think are plausible. Yes. Which is not not bad. Yes. Uh, Favourite counties, says Alan. Favourite counties, that yeah. Could, that could I be like one. that. I That's like that. quite good. Uh, Lee, three favourite properties they've lived in. Yep. Um, your three treasured possessions and why, says mm-hmm. Matt. Mm-hmm. Uh, Roger says top three female icons of any generation. Yeah, well, they're all good, though. Those they're all good. good. Yeah. Well, Should we like? start with the three, three counties? Three counties, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Three counties yeah, of, of, like that. Um, of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, Yes, you'd have to say. Yes, that's right, so yeah. So that we don't exclude anybody. Yes, exactly. Okay. Now, are you ready to see uh, how well you did at the weekend in terms of your predictions? Indeed. did on Friday. Indeed. Uh, I'm going to summon up the producer, Ollie, from behind the glass yeah. to bring in the... Uh, uh, the documents. Excellent. Uh, it's been put under lock and key because mm-hmm. on Friday morning's show, uh, we both had a go at predicting the scores. Yes. So should we run through them and see how right. we did? Right, okay. Uh, now they have been my... delivered to the desk. Uh, they have now been delivered. Thank you, Oliver. Uh, mm-hmm. Very, very kind. Uh, now, uh, here we are. The first game, of course, was Chelsea-Liverpool. Yes. Uh, which was on Friday night. Yes. Your prediction was... 1-1, one, one, wasn't it? No, Chelsea 2, Liverpool 1. Oh, right, okay. My prediction was yeah. uh, Chelsea 2, Liverpool 3. Chelsea so I got the three. score right. You got the you got the victor right. Yes. You didn't get the score right. Well, well, I got the victor right. Yeah, I got yeah. the result right. Yes. Is yes. What I mean. Yes. Uh, you didn't. Yes. No. So it's that's true. one to me. Okay. Uh, Hull versus Arsenal. Yeah. You had Hull two, Arsenal one. Yes. Uh, the correct score, of course, was Hull one, Arsenal four. Yes. Uh, I got two one to Arsenal. You got two one, did you? So okay. I got the result right again. Okay. And you didn't. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, Leicester against the. Uh, Burnley. Yes. Uh, I think we both did all right here. You said 3-1. Yeah. Actual score was 3-0. Yeah. Uh, I said 2-0. Mm. So we were both uh, quite good there. Mine was more right than yours. Well, how I got the right number right? of goals. Uh, you had Manchester City against Bournemouth 5-1. Yeah. Uh, I had 3-0. The mm. score was actually 4-0. Exactly. So we were both kind of even steam. Well, no, no, that. no. I was almost absolutely right because I got a, a margin of four goals. Well, you did. 5-1 you is a margin of four you goals. You extra for that. Well. Uh, uh, yeah. West Bromwich yeah. Albion against West Ham. Yeah. Uh, now, again, uh, you got this one right, and I didn't. Uh, mm-hmm. You got 2-1. The score yep. was, of course, 4-2. Yes. So you picked well there. Uh, I got 1-1. Yeah. Uh, and so I don't get anything for that. Right. Uh, next one is Everton against Middlesbrough. Yes. Uh, you would have said, of course, an Everton win. You yes. said 2-0. 2-0, uh, right. 3-1. I said 2-0 as well. Yeah, but it, it, again, I got the right number of goal difference. Well, so did I. 3-1. Yeah, so well, did I. Yeah, but you followed me on that one. No, I didn't. Anyway, anyway no. go on, yeah. Uh, yeah. Next one uh, is Watford, Man United. Yes. Um, I'm afraid... You you said Watford 1, Man yeah. United 3. Right. I guess what I said. What? Watford 2, Man United 1. Nah. So I got the result right. Really? That's incredible, that. Yeah, it's pretty I good. I think that's amazing. Pretty good. Calling Liverpool and Watford alone, I mm. think I should get some kind of special prize for. Mm. Uh, next one up, Crystal Palace against Stoke. Yeah. Uh, we both correctly said that Crystal Palace would win. Yeah. You said 2-0. Yeah. I said 1-0. Uh, a lot of goals this weekend, actually. Lots of scoring that one, four one. That's right. Yeah, yeah, an awful lot of goals. Yes. Uh, and then Southampton against uh, Swansea. Mm. Uh, you said Swansea would lose two one. Uh, I said that Southampton would win three nil. Yeah. And we both got that right result wise. It was one nil to Southampton. Right. Yeah. Um, which is probably the worst game of the weekend. Actually. It probably was. But yeah. I again, I got the margin of goals absolutely right. 2-1. Two, 2-1. One. Two, one. Yeah. Uh, well, one could, goal. You could say that. But you get yeah. nothing for that. Yeah. And then Tottenham against Sunderland. 
Uh, you got yep. 4 0. Yes. And it was, the end result was actually 1 0. Uh, yes. And what so, did you say? Uh, I said uh, 1 0. So right. I got that completely and utterly correct. Right. So okay. I actually not only yeah. got the result right, but I yeah. got the score right. Yeah, okay. So basically, uh, this has been collated. Mm. Uh, I had one correct score mm-hmm. out of the 10 games. Mm-hmm. You had no correct scores. Mm-hmm. I had eight correct results. Yeah. You had seven correct results. Yeah, well, that's pretty good. Uh, I had one wrong. And you had three wrong. Uh, so yeah, I would say overall yeah, yeah. that I've won that. Yeah, I would say you probably just edged just it. Just edged it. Just edged it, yeah, I'd but say so. Interesting stuff. So I think we could keep... This is a kind of winners and losers style. Yeah, thing, okay, okay, that's we fine. we keep this going? Yeah, keep it going. And we'll do it again on Friday. We will do it again on Friday, and okay? Then, uh, and then we can uh, we can collate it on Monday. So Indeed. thank you to everybody for doing that. Y- you know the guy we talked about with the wobbly legs in the marathon? Oh, yeah. Jim Peters. Jim Peters. It was Jim Peters in the marathon. Was that, he a British runner then? I think he was, yeah. yeah. That comes from Nick. Thank you, Nick. Oh, okay. Yeah. Currently nine yeah. seven to uh, the Philadelphia Eagles against Chicago. By the way, yeah, nobody cares. Don't worry. Mm. Yeah, right now then, um, what I want to talk to you about, right? What I want Go to on. talk to you about is now you're thinking of, you may be getting a new car soon or something like that. Okay? Yeah, I think so. You're yeah. thinking about that, right? Yeah. Now, and I've already got a, a sort of relatively new car. But yeah. Oh, well, you... actually, I have to tell you, mm. as apropos, and I'll tell you about my new car sort of sometime yes. in the future. Yes. I'll figure it out. Yes. Not because I was actually looking at one of these particular cars, right? But where I was looking. Mm-hmm. There was an Aston Martin dealership. Oh yes, right next door, and uh, I thought about you because I saw. They're pretty I, impressive, aren't they? Not only impressive, yeah. but you look down the line of all these cars, yeah. and they were ranging in price from sort of you know there was one for fifty six thousand. Yeah, that'd which be I a cheap think, one, which would be a, a used one probably. Yes, that's right. Um, all the way up to sort of one hundred twenty nine, hundred twenty thousand. Oh, I know. 000. The one I looked at most recently was eighty nine thousand. Yeah. And, um, you know, I've got a bit of a problem justifying spending that much money on was a that, car. Yeah, was that a two-door one? Yeah, yeah, two-door, yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. But, you know, very, very nice model. But anyway, there you go. And I'm not... Uh, well, who knows? You might make a lot of money in the next couple of years. Yeah, maybe, maybe. We'll see, we'll see. Um, you know, I could flog a house or something and buy one. <laughs> but, uh, no, I haven't thought about it, really. People might think that was a bit uh, reckless uh, of you. Uh, exactly. Yeah. But anyway, what I was going to say is I've seen a report saying that um, urgent action is needed yeah. to stop uh, the development of a new generation of cars which have touch screens, oh, yeah. which drivers are continually using whilst they're driving. But if and you've they've got become one of those, a huge distraction. But if you've got one of those um, like sat-nav machines yes. in the middle of your car, yes. um, aren't they, don't they all have warnings that say you cannot alter this? You cannot change it while the car is in motion. No. What they have is, it's quite simple, Mike. They have a sign that comes up Mm. to say, do you agree not to interfere with your driving while using this screen? All Uh you do is press yes. Right. But then there are no restrictions. Really? But yet, everything works. Right. I know this. Because, I mean, any any sat-nav I've ever had Mm. in a car, um, and, and, you know, some of them have been quite modern, is is one the actual sat-nav itself, I'm not saying you can't touch anything else, but the sat-nav itself, you can't alter. While no. you're driving. Well, you can now. Really? You can in mine because I quite recently I was on the way down to Bournemouth for a mm. family thing, right. and I had to pick up my niece um, on the way there in a place called Ringwood, which yeah. is about ten, fifteen miles I know short Ringwood, of, yeah. of it's Bournemouth. Yeah, right? roundabout, sorry. That's right. Yeah, absolutely. So, and and she was staying with her friend in a in a really sort of small cul de sac. You know this what your I mean? Niece that I've met. Yes, it is. Yes, ah. yeah, absolutely. Lovely girl. Yeah, lovely girl. Yeah. So. Anyway, as I got closer and closer, it got a bit more vague on the old uh, sat-nav. Right. So I was having to constantly change, you know, uh, my, my instructions right. onto the sat-nav. To uh-huh. get, and, and you could do it all the time. Oh, really? But what they're saying is, what they're saying is, uh, and I've got the report here, leading manufacturers including Fiat, T- uh, Fiat Toyota and Honda, have released models this year to allow motorists to check apps, mm. right? right, such as Twitter and Facebook on the go. Right. Next year, Ford and Nissan will start selling cars that allow drivers to connect their smartphones to touchscreen di- displays. Right. Now, this seems reckless to well, me. Well, it does, considering all yeah. the publicity we've been having over the past few days about the new rules about mobile That's phones right. and how people need to stop using them and the punishments for using them are coming in more yeah. and more. Yeah. Because a lot of people text, which is actually in some ways worse than yes. talking on the phone, isn't it? Yes, it, uh, indeed. Of course it is. Yeah. Uh, it says also, it, don't you also find, I mean, yeah. well, I know you've got that sort of that central media system, That's right? right yeah. which a lot of Mercedes have. And if you're, I mean, in the old days, if you were ch- changing a CD, which you do no That's problem, right. well, you're hitting a button to change the radio station. Now you're not doing that anymore. You're kind of, you know, you're using your fingers yes, to you kind are. of, you know, Absolutely. to leaf through things. You are, you are, definitely. You know? And I mean, it's all very well saying, well, a lot of the controls are on the steering wheel. Yeah. Well, they are, but not all of them. No. I mean, you, well, you like have the to... the volume's on there and stuff. Yeah, that's it? right. But you have to reach over mm. and, and, and do it. And I do think it's reckless. I mean, I've always said um, that, 
you know, you're obviously using a phone when you're driving. It's ridiculous. Yeah. And, and in fact, fully enough, a couple of newspapers last week highlighted the number of deaths that you've been caused by but that. But a lot so, of it from texting rather than actually talking. Yeah, that's right. I totally agree. Well, it's stupid. How you ridiculous is it to try and text? Thick, yeah. You know, exactly. Know. But what I'm saying is there are an awful lot of distractions in a car these days. Mm. For instance, um, you know, even if you've got hands-free phone, yeah. right, which I have in yeah. my, i got the Bluetooth in my car. Yeah. It still comes as a shock to you when that phone rings yeah. in your car. Yeah. You know what I mean? You, you, you really could be shocked. Because mm. one minute you're driving along, listening to the radio, next minute, a really loud noise yeah. is happening, and you're thinking, what is that? Yeah. Have I crashed into somebody or right. something? You don't recognise you re- your own phone ringing. Well, you do, but it's a different ringing tone in the car to yeah. out the car, if you see what I mean. And, you know, because it rings off the system yeah, in the yeah. car, not right. the not the phone itself. Yeah. And, and all that kind of and stuff. And you still have to press a button to answer. Yeah, of course you do, yeah. But it says here, campaigners claim that screens the size of small TVs are now pinging with updates from phones and social media and are a potential death trap. That's that, madness, isn't it? That will encourage drivers to take their eyes off the road. Well, funny it, enough, I was thinking about this today as I was yes. driving up here. Yes. Because, of course, my jalopy doesn't have any of that Bluetooth or sure, anything like that. Sure, sure. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, how long is it going to be before the opposite happens, yeah. where they actually outlaw any kind of communication in mm. the car to enable who, who safer knows? driving? Who knows? It, it says here, Vauxhall's new Corsa has a 7-inch touch screen. Now, that's a big screen that is a big inside screen. a car. A yeah. 7-inch uh, touch screen that allows drivers to send text messages and access a range of compatible apps. Yet even the TV advert promoting the technology shows the car swerving into the middle of the road as an actress operates the system. Mm. I've not seen that advert. I haven't either. No. 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 Mm. Now, car makers insist the technology is safe, saying that the screens and apps are designed to minimise the time needed to operate them. They argue that much of the functionality can be operated by voice or by controls on the steering wheel, uh, so drivers can use the technology without taking their eyes off the road. That's crazy. But a lot of experts don't agree no, with this. No, that's ridiculous. Yeah. I, don't, I don't like the sound of that at all. No, I don't. But uh, we mm. should keep following this one. Indeed. Now, Dave has sent me a picture of that tree you were talking about uh, with the bike in it. Oh, has it? Yeah. Yeah, well, there you go. Look, and isn't that says, amazing? Yeah, it is amazing. Yeah. He says it was a, uh, a, the, the bike actually got there mm. uh, because it was a boy who chained his cycle to a tree and went off to war but never returned. Is that right? In 1920. It's a very touching story, yeah, isn't absolutely it? absolutely right. Yeah, yeah. Now, coming up next, we're going to talk mm. about our three favourite counties and why. Indeed. Uh, right here on Talk Sport. Sport. We are the two mics. Tomorrow night, of course, it's Ask Porky. Uh, so if you've got any questions, any problems you need solving, uh, this is the place to do it. Uh, we'll be putting out something on Twitter and, of course, on Facebook as well. But tonight, uh, it is listography. We've done away with winners and losers for the moment. And a few people have said, uh, in answer to a couple of requests mm. to bring it back, yes, yes. say, don't bring it back. Uh, we can't stand to hear Porky moaning of all the Well, time. I, that's a very cruel, uh, very cruel way to look at things, in my view. OK. How about mm. this from uh, mm. uh, for Stumpy, or Steve, as he's otherwise known? Yes. What is a tree's least favourite month? Um, this is a joke, obviously. It is, yeah. it, it would be... Uh, hang on. January, February, April, May... Uh, January, February, March, April, May. June, July, August, September, November... I don't know. What is it? Uh, September. September. Huh? Get it? Hey? No, I, I don't. Like We're a pathetic joke. I quite like that. Yeah. It's very good. Anyway, now, uh, mm. just before we go on, uh, Philadelphia have just touched down uh, over in uh, uh, Chicago. Yes. 15-7. Yes. Just scored a touchdown, I should oh, say. Is that right? 15-7. Yeah. Just about to kick the, uh, the, That's, uh, the, that, the goal. That, that author I was telling you about mm. is George R. R. Martin. George, that's him, yeah. 68, and uh, he wrote the novel Game of Thrones, uh, one in a series of seven such works, which now, of course, is the most popular TV show in the world, isn't it? Is. It is. Did yeah. you see the Emmys, by the way? No. I know this is apropos of nothing. No. I mean, uh, it wasn't... You know how normally you'd expect there to be quite a lot of British winners? Yes. There weren't that many. Night Manager didn't win very much. I think it won for Best Director. Oh, did it? Uh, and, of course, uh, Maggie Smith won for Downton Abbey. Oh, did she? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. apart from that, I don't think there was much other action for is any that right? British shows. Yeah. Oh, is that right? Yeah, is that yeah well, we might have to pick that up tomorrow. Yes, Talk indeed. Talk more about that. Now, would you like to go first on the old uh, um, uh, yes. uh, county front? No, it's okay. three, your three favourite counties okay. in Britain. Okay, three favourite counties. First yeah. one, Cheshire, Okay. because that's where I was brought up, and yeah. I love it. And when I drive home, or you know, I'm driving to Goodison or something, I always come off the M6 at uh, the A5 junction, right. and I go up the A5 through Whitchurch and, and that, and, and it's wonderful to drive across the Cheshire Plain. Right. The, um, the editor of the first paper I worked for, Hubert Humphreys, wrote a book 
called Plague on the Cheshire Plain. It was about foot and mouth disease, the Hubert original Humphreys. one. Humphreys, that sounds a bit like the guy that ran for president. Yeah, right? his name, actually, I think it was Herbert Humphrey. Herbert Humphreys. Herbert Humphreys, yeah. But it was quite funny, actually, because he was uh, in his 60s, and we didn't have a news editor at the Chester Chronicle. We had there was a just chief... no news. <laughs> well, no, 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 there's plenty <laughs> of news, but we had a chief reporter. Right. But the chief reporter was a woman called Judith, uh-huh. and she was in her 60s, right. and we used to have to put up the revolting spectacle of uh, Herbert Humphrey groping Judith <laughs> in the office. <laughs> Mini downstairs in the underground <laughs> car park. <laughs> They've been a nicer for years. Yeah, or yeah, they had. Yeah, they had. Yeah, and they're both married to somebody else. <laughs> but you know, this was a bit on the side for both of them. You right. know, and it was quite um, occasionally. You know, they, they they'd sneak away to what they thought was a remote bar somewhere in Chester. Yeah. But you know, because we were in every well, it's bar. Well, a pretty small town. Yeah, it's a pretty small town, yeah. and 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 we were in every bar all the time. We'd we'd, we'd come across them, and they you know they do re- amazingly ridiculous things like go and sit at the opposite ends of the room and pretend they didn't see each other and all this kind of stuff you know right. but it was uh it was uh it was pensioner it was sort of an eye opener for your first sort of yeah like, it was scenario, yeah right? yeah it was it was pensioner romance and right. and that's not very uh not very easy to take no. to be honest no, okay. no well i'm going to say wiltshire right, right. as my first favorite yep. because it's such a beautiful part Tis of the world. Be- i totally agree and it's full of mystery and mysticism and, and yeah, i and, totally you know, agree stonehenge yeah and, and the ley lines and, and, and beautiful, yeah. beautiful sort of, you know, all those barrows that are existing. I was going to say, the Roman barrows, which are thousands of years yeah. old. Yeah, and they're little market towns like Devizes, yes. where I used to live very close to, and, yes. uh, and to uh, Marlborough as well. Yeah. And I mean, even though um, I had, you know, that was where... Avebury. I, uh, Avebury, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, very, very nice pub there. Yeah. Great pubs, by the way. Yes. And even though it's the place where my marriage sort of dissolved, That's right, yeah. I had a lot of very happy Due memories. Due to your over-rogerisation well, we of uh, people who weren't your happened. wife. You know, there yeah. was lots of different reasons why that happened. Yeah, well, that was the main one. Well, it wasn't really. Of course it was. Well, we just drifted apart. Anyway, yeah. that's not the point. Well, I'm not the surprised point, you drifted the apart. You were story, drifting everywhere else. The point of the story, well, mm. I was working in London. Yeah, exactly. I have some very, very happy yeah. memories. Very happy memories. So, legacy over in, uh, in London yeah, well, and the poor uh, wife you know, back in Wilshire. I didn't take, You've I didn't, got a lot to I didn't answer start for. picking holes in your uh, choice of Cheshire, the place that yeah. you claim you love, right. but you never yeah. go. Yeah, come on, go on. Go and on. I'm, well, I see, I'm Wilshire. I've got very happy memories yeah. of, of raising my children there. Oh, and you're um, back there all um, the time, do you? Um, I, I, don't, I haven't been there for a while. No, no, of course you haven't. So, stop accusing me and not go to Cheshire. Yeah, well, I'm not from Wilshire. Yeah, well, I was born yeah. in London. Yeah, well, I don't make out that Wilshire is my home. Right. I lived. I wouldn't mind living there again because I did live there for quite a long time. Time, okay, and it was a very, very happy part of my life. Lovely, thank Good. you very much. Yeah, very pleased. I'm trying to ruin it. No, no. Right, What's uh, your second council? Second one's Northumberland, but I've told you all about that That's before. You want to retire there? I want to retire there. I think it's a beautiful county. Are it's you just a... saying this because we're going to Whitley Bay? Well, no, but we yeah. are going to Whitley Bay. Whitley Bay's not even in Northumberland anymore. It's in Tyne and Weir. Oh, is it? And Northumberland starts right up at uh, Hexham and uh, and north there, right up to Gallows Shields to the border. It's a beautiful county. Uh-huh. It's got the Kielder Forest, got the Kielder Dam. It's got the River Coke and about a dozen other rivers. And I, I just love it for its, you know, wild roar. If you've got the coast there and it's got those castles, you've got the castle, of course, where uh, Harry Potter was filmed. Yes, um, Alnick. It's, uh, Anik, yeah, that's Anik. right. Anik and, uh, and places. Alnwick, isn't it? Yeah, and that's Bamber right. Bamburgh Castle as well. Bamburgh Castle. And they've got beautiful, like you said about the mystique of Wiltshire, the mystique of Northumberland centres around Lindisfarne and St Mary's yeah. Isle and those sort of places. Have you ever been out there? It's a holy island. Yes, I have. Yeah, yeah. You get stuck. Uh, you can get stuck if the tide comes. Yeah, you can. Yeah, I think we went, I think we walked across the causeway. I can't remember now if that was St Mary's or Lindisfarne. Yeah, stagger back and um, and it, yeah, and it has a special romance for me because it was the first after after growing up on the Chester Chronicle. First paper I went to to work on was the Evening Chronicle in Newcastle. I think Newcastle is a brilliant city, and we a mate of mine was a rally driver, so we used to go you know into the forests and Saturday nights competing in these rallies and, and, and spectacular uh, scenery when you woke up the next day, the mm. Sunday. Wow. Well, I'm going to go to Scotland yep. for my next one. OK. Uh, and it's going to be Argyll and Butte. Oh, OK. I mean, there are many beautiful parts of Scotland. Yes. And it's almost impossible to choose between them. I right? agree. But the reason I choose Argyll and Butte is because it's a place I used to go an awful lot when I was a kid. Yes. Because we used to go. There's two sort of um, um, islands where yeah. people from the west of Scotland would go for, right. for their holidays. And every Easter right. we used to go to a place called Butte, mm. uh, which was Rothsey. Basically, yes, uh, and it was where old Prince Charles had a had a place there because it was. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, he was the, the um, I don't know, lieutenant of Butte or yes. something like that. Yes. But it was just a, again a place of very very beautiful and very happy memories. And of course, yeah. the thing about it is um, that it covers that kind of very 
um, skiddy part of the southwest of yes. Scotland, you know? Yes. Um, and you can drive on roads where there are no cars, there's locks everywhere, mm. beautiful scenery, and it's just it's just wonderful. It includes yeah. a place called Helensburgh, uh, which is not far from uh, where they have all the naval stuff. Yes. Uh, it's got um, Dumbarton in there as well. Yeah. Um, it's got sort of Loch Lomond around that sort of area too. Mm-hmm. And it's just very beautiful. And here's yeah. one piece of information that you might not know. Right. That in 1963... Uh, from Russia with Love had loads of its scenes filmed in Argyll and Butte. Really? Did you know that? No, I didn't actually. Yeah. I mean, there was a scene in, from Russia with Love at this academy that the KGB guys were all trained at, yeah. weren't they? Like a sort of manor house thing. That's I right, suppose yeah. that was there as well. well it yeah. might have been, yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's just, just some beautiful parts of it. You know, yes. there's Talbot, there's Loch Gilped, you know, um, yeah. Inverary. Yes. And it, it kind of covers up all the way up to Oban as well. So yeah. it's beautiful. Just a yeah. very beautiful part of the world. Okay, great. And uh, my third one, you won't be surprised to know, yeah. is uh, Surrey, because that's where I have lived really for about, I don't know, the last 20 years, I uh-huh. suppose. And um, and I think it's so spectacular. The reason I love Surrey is because where I live borders Greater London and Surrey. Yeah. And it's so easy to well, swap it, between the two. Right. So, but you're not in Greater London. You're in Surrey. Yeah, I'm in Surrey. Yeah, yeah. But it's right on the border, you know. And uh, and when I say Stockbroker Belt, there's some beautiful villages there, beautiful pubs. Um, there's a, there's a real you know feeling of class about Surrey, I suppose, really? without sounding like a snob or something. Yeah, you don't sound anything like a snob. No, no, no. You can go to Cobham and places like that, and there's tremendous wealth there based on the football industry, really. Uh-huh. And, uh, and well, it's I, not just the football industry. I mean, it's become that of late. Yeah, it has. Yeah, but it's yeah. always been a pretty expensive uh, part. Uh, yeah, I, t- I totally agree. And and it's just... Uh, I go to Box Hill, and I sit on the top of Box Hill, which is just... When was um, the last time you did that? Oh, a couple of weeks ago. Really? A couple of weeks ago, I would say, yeah. Can and, you park up there? Yes, you can. Oh, yeah, there's big car parks. Yeah, yeah. big car parks. So you, you drive all the way up to Box Hill. Yes. And there's a big car park. Yes. And you sit on the top of it. Yes, I do, yeah. Are there a lot of other people around? Well, it depends on what time of day you go. Sometimes I go at 5.30 in the morning if the sun's just really? come up or something. Yeah, yeah. And, Isn't that a bit and, weird? No, it's not weird to look out over... And that, that's looking out over you the... You watch it's not some kind of dogging area. No, it's not a dogging area. That looks out over the North Downs. Right. And, but you can see right almost to the South Downs, mm. you know. It's, it's, a, it's a beautiful part of the world. Okay. And, uh, and... You prefer it to the South Coast? Uh, yeah, I suppose I do a bit because it's... Um, you know, it 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 it's got so many special features. On the south coast, I actually live in a town, but in uh, in Stockbroker Belt, I live on the edge of the country, which yeah. is great. Mm. Okay. Yes. Well, I'm going to have my last uh, choice yeah. down in the southwest as well. Right. Uh, Wiltshire's kind of the beginning of the southwest. Yes. To me. Uh, and Dorset is Dorset, one of my favourite yeah. counties of all time. I've been going there since I was a child as yeah. well. I used to go. I used to go on school trips to Swanage. Yes, yeah, Swanage, uh, which yeah. hasn't really changed that much over the years. Mm. The Jurassic Coast. Yeah, uh, which runs yeah, all yeah, the way yeah. down past yeah, Lulworth yeah. Cove. Well, my family lived down there in Bournemouth, you know, if you mm. go along there. and um, Yeah, but it's and a bit more built up there. there. Yeah, I'm thinking yeah. more in terms of, you know, a little bit uh, back a bit. Yeah, you I know, know, I know, I know. Yeah, not quite worry. as far along as Poole yes. <clears throat> or Bournemouth, which is also lovely. It is. Uh, but you can go over to, you know, to take that little ferry uh, from Poole. Yeah. You know, it's on a chain. That's right. And it goes across over to... To Swanage. You know, to Swanage yeah, and that's that beautiful part of the world. Studland. Yeah, Studland. I mean, it's just it's breathtakingly beautiful. Yeah, I mean, I've got a tweet here from a guy in Glasgow, Hammond. Uh, saying good choice, amazing drive from Glasgow uh, to Loch Gilped. Mm-hmm. The scenery is amazing, yes, which is it is. Right? Yeah. Um, so mine is very much based on not so much mm. the wealth of the areas, yeah. although Dorset is quite wealthy. Yes, I mean Corfe Castle, for example. That's right, beautiful part of the world. That's right. Um, and so I've just always liked it down there, and it seems it's very civilized. Yeah. And I don't want to create a theme here, but there's some fantastic pubs down there as well. Yes, you know I totally agree. I mean, look, I've nominated my three, but I could nominate another six counties in Britain which are yeah. beautiful. Cornwall is beautiful. Devon's beautiful, uh, you know, Exmoor and mm. Dartmoor and places like that. Yeah. Um, I would go into North Wales yeah. and tell you that, I'm, I mean, I don't know the names of the counties in North Wales anymore. It used to be called things like... Well, lots of them have been changed. M- yeah, they? it used to be called Monmouthshire and places like that. But now they're called Powys and, and places like that. But anyway, certainly in North Wales, where Bala Lake yeah. is... Wasn't Monmouthshire in the South Wales? Yeah, I think it was, yeah. yeah. But certainly where... They haven't moved, have they? No, but they've changed the name of it, I think. Yeah. Um, certainly the counties in North Wales are just so beautiful. You know, Swallow Falls, Bala Lake, um, Bala itself. The, 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 I, I like the North Wales coast. A lot of people take the mickey out of places like Prestatyn well, and Rill Dudno. and all that. Well, hey? I've been to Slendudno. Yeah. And I have Dudno. to say, I wasn't terribly t- yeah. taken well, with the place. Well, you know. That was where, unfortunately, I think I've told you the story before, where... Uh, 
uh, my political editor and my news editor. Oh, that's right. Uh, ended up getting a punch up at the India restaurant. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and because the the event that we were all attending, which was the Labour yes. Party, the Wales Labour Party conference, that's right, was so boring. Yes, this was front page news. Yeah, I know. Yeah, amazing, isn't it? Ridiculous. Amazing you have to fill a void when there's a, a vacuum for news. Exactly right. Quite right. Now, yes. Uh, so that's it then. That's the listography. Indeed, for the night. Yeah. You didn't exactly stretch yourself there. So you had one, the place where you're born, yes. the place where you live. Yes. And where was the third one? Uh, Northumberland. Oh, uh, where the place where you want to retire. retire. Yeah, yeah. So it's not as if you're in any way self-interested here. Well, well, hang on, hang on. Your three were places you've lived or my been three, on holiday. No, my three were... Um, yeah. Were, well, I Wiltshire you lived. Well, Dorset lived you went there, on holiday. I raised my children there. Right? And, and the one in Scotland you lived in, presumably. Well, I didn't live in Argyll and Butte. No, I live in Glasgow. Oh, well, I used to travel to our garland view. What for? It's a place of fantastic natural beauty. Yeah, but is that all you went there for? Well, I sometimes went with, you know, um, things to do. Sometimes yes. stayed in a few hotels in that part of the world. You know, oh, I see. Played Just a bit a, of golf. Uh, and a bit of horizontal refreshment, possibly, no yeah, doubt. Possibly, yeah, possibly. Oh, you'd admit to that, then? Well, why wouldn't I? So it was nothing a... illegal about having sex with people. So for you, it's, just, it's it. just like a county, just like another knocking well, I know shop, that you isn't just it? just drive around on your own and go and sit on the top of Box Hill <laughs> and stare <laughs> out into the, into the blackness and wonder what on earth has happened to your life. No, no, that's appreciation of the world around me. Really? And I, have no, I make no uh, apologies for doing that, believe me. Okay. No apologies at all. Believe me. One of the phrases you'll hear a lot on this show, one thing you know is never to believe a word he says. Quite this right. Is talk sport. The boy who wouldn't grow up chasing his own tail The boy who couldn't grow up and out in on bail Oh, idiot child, clutching to life Always made to grow up, always told to shut up Talk sport. We are the two mics. I've got a note here from Winford. We still uh, haven't heard, by the way, from a long time from Derek the uh, uh, from Pinkoy. No, we haven't. No, I don't know. We're starting to get a bit worried about. It. People are now wondering whether he's uh, emigrated or what. Well, I don't know. I hope mm. he's well. Yeah. And uh, if he wants to get in touch, you know, even if he wants to hurl a few insults at me, I have no problem. Yeah. Now, how about no. this one from yeah. Paul in yeah. Torquay? Tell yes. Porky not to go near any orchards, as he will get pelted like in the Wizard of Oz. Um, well, is, did the tree throw things? Yeah, at the do you remember of that? Oz? Yeah, in the Wizard no. of Oz. Yeah, the trees threw the apples. I don't think I've ever, I don't think I've ever seen Wizard of Oz. To You've be never seen the Wizard of I Oz. I don't think so. For no. heaven's sake! No, you must have seen it when it was on at Christmas one time, surely. No, I mean that's the one with um, what's the name in it, isn't it? Judy Garland. Judy Garland. Judy Garland. That's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. I was going to say Judy Garland's mother. We're not in but, Kansas uh, anymore. No. Liza Minnelli's mother, you think? Liza Minnelli's mother, that's right, yeah. Uh, how about this one from mm. uh, Jay the Cabby? Mm. There are loads of ice hockey teams in England. Where I live, we've got the Milton Keynes Lightning. Yes. So they could play the, uh, the the Guildford Flames. Do you think anybody cares? Well, it could be quite interesting. Yeah, you think so? Mm. Yeah, well, I don't think ice hockey in this country has any following whatsoever, even less than NFL, I well, would I imagine. Well, no, I think it does. You um, think so? Uh, Winford mm. says this, mm. MG, now we know why MP's average quiz score is 3 out of 10. That mm. hockey stick thrower must have hit the part of the brain that makes you clever. Yeah, uh, yeah, well, you know, you say that, but I mean, of course, I've still been pretty clever in life, so... I don't, I don't, think, I don't, been, I don't think you've done too badly. Yeah, really. I've done too badly. Yeah. Listen, you see this report today, this is very odd, because I think it, refer, it might refer to you. Now, would you agree you've got a big head? What? Would you agree you've got a big what, you head? Mean physically? Yes. I wouldn't say so. I think you have. Do you? Yeah, I think you have. I think you've got a very big head. I mean, head. Alan Brazil's got a big head. Uh, I mean, I'm, compared to him, I've got I'm literally a very small head. No, no, I don't think so. I think you've got a big head. But the reason I ask is that um, this report from one of my scientific journals, oh, yeah. uh, babies with bigger heads grow up to be more intelligent, a mm. major study has found. Is that right? Research involving half a million Britons has found a strong link between the size of head at birth yeah. and how well you do at school. I mean, I suppose it could have something to do with the size you are generally at birth as well, right? I suppose so. Mm. The findings come from an analysis of 500,000 adults aged 40 to 69, right. taking part in the UK Biobank project. Uh -huh. They've all undergone a series of tests and provided detailed information about their past, including medical records from birth. Now, how would you know how any, what, the size of somebody's head well, they birth measure, 40 think, years I, ago? I think they measure babies' heads when they're born. Do they? You know, because they do things like they'll take a footprint, yeah, uh, they'll measure your head, they'll measure the length. Well, why has nobody told they'll... me the size of my head when I was born? Well, maybe you haven't asked for it. Well, I haven't asked for it, but who would? Where would that record be? Well, there might be some kind of record that your mother would have. I don't. I don't think it's on your birth certificate. But no, it's there not will definitely be, on your birth certificate. There will be some kind of hospital record, probably, of the circumference of your head. Have you ever been asked for your birth certificate in the last twenty years? Um, do you know I was asked for a birth certificate, mm. and I can't remember why. 
I think it might have been something to do with a mortgage. And would you know where to get it? You know, I didn't because I, I had to go yeah. to my mother, right. uh, who uh, said that she thought she mm. had it, mm. and then she thought she'd given it to me some years earlier for yeah. some other reason. Yeah. And I think I had to order a duplicate. Right, OK, because I, I wouldn't know where the hell mine is now. But I've never been asked for it for the last 25 years. I think once you've got a passport, yeah. you don't need birth certificate anymore. Not generally, but there are still, I think, I, I think there are still mortgage companies that ask for yeah, it. Yeah, maybe, like that, maybe, you know? maybe. But anyway, anyway, it says here, um, so I don't know who would record the size of your head. It says, uh, let me see, uh, all, all undergone a series of tests and provided detailed information about their past, including medical records, mm. yeah. Study published in the Journal of Molecular Psychiatry. Oh, yeah. It's amazing, that, Well, at least it? it's not from it's that same that conference yeah. we've been talking about No, all exactly, night. yeah. It reveals highly significant links between the head size at birth and how intelligent they were as a child. Mm. The study found a strong link between head size and cognitive test score. Well, that would which, make sense. Which is an assessment of their brain function and memory. Right. Well, you're saying that the bigger the head you have, the bigger the brain you have. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think they're saying that. I don't think they're saying that. It says here, babies' heads double in size during their first year of life. Did you know that? They what? They, it says babies' heads double in size yeah. during the first year of their life. Yes, I did know that. It and says the... I've had four babies. you think I would know that. Uh, well, I didn't know whether you knew it or not. Well, this is why it's very important that they develop a very strong neck muscles. And why you put them on their stomachs to kind of crawl about, right. even when they can't move. Why? Because what they then have to do is learn how to hold their head up. Oh, I see. Because if they can't hold their head up, when you lift them up, their head lolls about all over the place. Hold your head up, woman. <laughs> hold your head up, I don't think up, it's hold your head up, woman. woman. Yes, it is. No, hold your no, head up. No, it's hold up. your head high, isn't it? Hold your head high. Oh, is hold it? your, okay. It's just hold your head up, uh, yeah. hold your head up, yeah. hold your head up, mm. hold your head high, mm. woman. Oh, is it? OK. Right, now then, um, so the brain reaches half its adult size yeah. by nine months of age. Right. And nearly three quarters by the time they're two. So by the time they're two, they've got three quarters of the brain. Yeah. But in 2013... But it has developed, though, in terms of the way that it will do. No, no. This is why they no, say, and, and I've told you this before, mm. that, that the, but young babies, particularly eight, sort of 18 yeah. months old, yeah. are like sponges. You teach them anything. You teach them anything. Right, OK. Uh, but in 2013, Australian researchers claimed that the rate at which babies' heads grew mm. was more important than their initial size. Yes. The study of 13,800 children showed that those with largest increases in head circumference in the first month of life, yeah. had a higher IQ when they started school. Right. So you apparently now so can work out me, whether so you're... you're... telling me if, if, you might, if it's true what you say, that my, I do have a yeah. large head, Yes. Uh, then obviously that would mean I have a higher IQ. Well, not necessarily, because we're not size your head was when you were born. Well, I think I was quite a big baby. Mm, yeah, all well, my, actually, and all well, my kids have been You're quite baby. a big, fat person, so <laughs> you would you would you would have been a big baby. I should. Well, imagine. I mean, I wasn't the one who had to be taken back to the hospital to have a ball of fat removed from my stomach. Well, I know that's a problem. Even isn't though it? that may or may not be a true story. Now, yeah. how about this from Vicky? Yeah. Vicky says every true Beatles fan knows his family had a record store, not a furniture store. Porky is a plank. No, I'm d- I'm giving you a direct quote from Paul McCartney. Uh-huh. And he said, and his dad ran a furniture store. Epstein ran the record store. His dad ran the furniture store. So just to get okay. that straight, thank you. Well, I mean, as long as you yeah. think you're right, that's the main yes, thing. Yes, exactly. Right. Yeah. Now, we're yeah. almost out of time. Uh, so we'll have to yeah. stop for a moment and we'll come back uh, very, very shortly right okay. here on Talk Sport. Crazy. But that's how it goes. People. Now, we've only got less than a minute, uh, I'm yep. afraid, Mr. Parry, but yep. very nice to see you, I have yep. to say. Uh, yep. We've got quite a busy week again, haven't we? Busy week. Uh, we've, got work, we've got work to do on this uh, video yes. uh, that's going to be coming out shortly, we hope. Well, it's inside a month, anyway, yes. uh, of our trip to Edinburgh. That will be uh, the Christmas video for this year. Christmas video. We're also yep. hoping by the next, maybe in the next week or so, to yes. have a podcast out of one of the Edinburgh shows. We are, indeed. Uh, which we're sorting out as we speak. Yes. And uh, lots and lots of other things going on as well. An L- awful lot of other things going on. Show going on on Sunday. Show going on. On Sunday this Whitley week. Bay coming up on Saturday. So we've got Willie Bay Saturday night, and we're dashing back here Sunday morning on the old Rattler. And uh, we have a show from one till four on Sunday afternoon. Looking yeah. forward to that very yeah. much indeed. Let's hope there's no kind of uh, train problems because I see that yes. uh, we've only got like hardly any time at all. We'll talk about this tomorrow. Southern trains are yes. going to sort everything out, but not for another two years. I know. So there's more misery to come if you My have to travel God. Uh, on the train network. Don't forget to come back tomorrow for another sparkling, as fizzy as a bottle of champagne. Podcast from the two mics. 
you know about music, you could put on the back of a bloody postage stamp. Well, I mean, blank. well, what you know about what you know, I'm telling Paul you is, is that he's band. recording something in Sussex, and three is it, of what's the people. He recording? Well, he's probably recording some music, Paul. <laughs> what <laughs> what so, do you think? So you don't know who these three unnamed members and unknown no, band don't. are recording, I or don't. if they're recording, where they're recording. No, but I'm telling you it because you're such a you maniac me, about the Beatles. And you, I thought you might be interested. You if you're not interested, you can get stuck. Okay, you can get lost, and you can bugger off. You can. You told me this is a nugget of great information. Well, I thought you'd be interested. In fact, it's a palpable piece Stick of... Stick it up your jumper. N- a palpable piece you of nonsense. bearded nons- weirdo. <laughs> palpable piece of nonsense. <laughs> this you. is talk sport. I'm sick of the Beatles. What? I'm what? sick of you. Here we go round the mulberry bush, the mulberry bush, the mulberry bush. Yeah. Here we go round the mulberry yeah. bush. All four.